Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome for the first time in 2021 to the British Universities Karting Championship. My name is Andrew Mather from Double Dash Motorsport Media, and we're here for round three of the 2021 British Universities Karting Championship main championship great circuit that we're at today we are at of course clay pigeon raceway in dorset uh, 815 meter circuit nine turns looks easy uh, but it's anything but one of the fastest uh, average speeds on the calendar proper old school circuit this uh, jensen button of course started his career uh, with his dad john button back in the day weather conditions for this time of year pretty much perfect it's cold but it's sunny there's not a cloud in the sky light bit of wind very very good conditions for racing here at clay pigeon alongside me in a commentary box for the first time in about six months is my good mate um partner in crime at double dash motorsport media it is of course mr howard mitchell morning howard how are you doing I'm doing well, mate. It's fantastic to be back. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and joining us. Um, yeah, great to be back in the comms box with you, mate. Although, as you can see, flags at half mast here in commemoration of, uh, of Prince Philip. Absolutely. Uh, His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, and all of our thoughts uh, today here at Clay Pigeon. Hope uh, we race well in his honour because motorsport was one of his many uh, passions. He was president in chief, of course, of the British Racing Drivers Club uh, for over 40 years. Uh, there, as we see, is the circuit. A uh, little bit damp in places. I say it is cold, but it should dry up across the course of the day. Not a cloud in the sky. I think we can go to a hot lap of this clay pigeon circuit uh, to check out what's going to face the drivers today. Welcome to BUKC for round one of the 2021 season. Let's go for a lap here at Clay Pigeon. We start the lap off with Billy's Blind. Two right-handers, very fast and very key to get a good exit out of here and to not get yourself into a crash at lap one. Track position is vital here as you want to get a good line now through the next section of the S's. Single file through here, not much chance of an overtake, but I'm sure we'll see one on the first lap through here. We then head down the Sturmy Straight, very fast down here into the braking zone of Hans Hairpin. Slightly cambered corner this one, but you've got to watch out for someone to send one down the inside. Get in that switch back move, being on the power nice and early as we then head into towards the Horseshoe. Again, quite cambered through this one, very fast entry, tight on exit, and you want to get a good run out of here as you then head into the very fast right-hander of buttons the penultimate corner on the circuit and then top bend again another very fast corner also doubles up as the pit lane entrance now again bring the car over to the left hand side clipping that apex on the right bring again back over to the left hand side now watching out for anyone who could potentially get a slipstream on you here as you head down the start finish straight past the clubhouse to finish the lap here at clay pigeon for that uh, track guide of the circuit here at Clay Pigeon. Uh, if you do want to get involved on the stream, uh, we do love to hear from you. You can uh, let us know who you're supporting in the comments because you have plenty of comments uh, already. Good morning to Casey Racing PL. Morning from X to Uni. Uh, do let us know who you are supporting here today for round three and round four in the afternoon of the Bree. Uh, BUKC for 2021. You can like uh, and share the stream as well. Do make sure you subscribe to the Alpha Live YouTube channel. But I think now is time for the moment everybody's been waiting for. He's here again. He's still tall. He's still handsome and beautifully Welsh. It is, of course, Mr. Jacob Harris, who is down on the grid, ready to catch up with some of the drivers. Jacob, over to you, mate. Thank you, Andrew. Welcome down to the grid for the first race. Uh, let's go have a chat, first and foremost, with the man on pole position. I'm not quite sure who it is, so we're going to go find out live on camera. And I think pole position is on the right-hand side. And let's have a look who we've got in this nice Tony Kart suit. We have Mr. Smith. How are you doing? Yeah, all good, thanks. And who are you racing for today? Uh, Bournemouth. Is this your first time on pole position? Uh, first time at this track as well, yep. Yeah. And uh, did you take part in that test just now to learn it, or is it fresh? I didn't know there was a test on. Should have, maybe should have tried it, but anyway. Go. Read your emails next time. So what's, what's the plan then, if you don't know? Do you, do you even know which way to turn? <laughs> just going to have to see her. Give it a go. 
you look like you've got a little bit of karting experience already. Uh, where have you been? Uh, I'm actually from South Africa, so I used to race in the South African National Championships. Okay, and any success out there? Yeah, had some good races. Okay then, uh, it looks like we're ready to go actually, so we will cut this interview short, but thanks for talking to us, all the best learning the track. This is going to be the first race of round three, the UKC 2021. I'm heading back up to the commentary box now, and I'll pass you over to Andrew Mather and Howard Mitchell. Short little few practice laps for the drivers, uh, so let's take this opportunity to look at the championship standings as we go into racing here today at Clay Pigeon. Two rounds so far, both at PF International last week. Loughborough A took a double round victory, so have a maximum score of 120 on the board at this stage of the season. Oxford Brooks A always contend as a second there on 117. Cambridge A ran strongly. Uh, they are there in third. Leeds B currently top of the Clubman uh, subcategory. P for Premiers, C for Clubmans. They, f they are fourth overall in the championship. Oxford Brooks have then got another two teams, C and D in fifth and sixth. Birmingham A looking like they are returning to form of previous years. Had a strong run and a race win for Rory Smith at PFI there, there in seventh. Warwick A consistent again in eighth. Nottingham Trent A, one of the most improved teams over the last few years in ninth. And the University of Wales Trinity St. David uh, A team from Swansea, they are there in tenth. Howard. Would yes, you sir. like, for the first time in 2021, to take us through a grid, sir? I certainly would. Um, I'm just going to take the executive decision that that graphic on screen might be a little bit off because it was definitely Bournemouth who were on pole position for us with that grid interview. Uh, Jason Smith taking it away for us there. And alongside him is going to be UWEB. Uh, with Christos Michael at the wheel. Then it's going to be X to B and Brooks B on row two with Sam Hampshire and Lucas Sullivan at the wheels respectively. Felix Connolly takes uh, University of West of England A from fifth and then it's Sam Rowling for Birmingham A rounding out the third row. Fourth row of the grid is Alexander Smith for Sheffield A and Joe Hockwad for Swansea A. Leeds B have Alex Meganson going for them with Oxford Brooks C's Alex Page making up the row, fifth row of the grid to round out the top ten. Uh, Roberto Pereira for Nottingham Trent C and Pietro Bozinski for Imperial A are row six. Row seven is going to be Jorge Ruiz uh, for Brooks D and Ocean Beach for Manchester A. Nottingham A have Jack Galt with Birmingham B's Junyin, uh, Junyin Zhao for them on row eight. Row nine is going to be Loughborough B's Ben Smith and Cardiff A's Ewan Hennessy. Row 10 rounding out the top 20 is Leeds A's Jack Moulton and then Dan Burgess for Oxford Brooks A. It's an all Warwick affair on row 11 with the Warwick A car with Sam Stevens at the wheel and Angel, Angel Marco uh, alongside for Warwick C. Extra A has Max O'Shaughnessy going for them and Birmingham C have Benjamin Boros, that's row 12. Row 13 is Nottingham Trent A's Sam Pooley and Loughborough A's James Mills. Uh, row 14 is UEA. A with Sam Sanders at the wheel and Tom Hasty for Brighton B. Then it's Cambridge B's Alistair Senior and Swansea B's James Wright making up row 15. Row 16 rounding out your 32 car grid is Angus Rankin for University of Wales Trinity St David B and Newcastle A's Harry Jones. That is your grid for race one of round three. We've got two rounds for you here today at Clay Pigeon. Five races in each one and that is how they line up for the very first race of the day. A couple of drivers just trying to find their spots on the grid. If this is your first time watching a BUKC race, welcome, it's great to have you uh, on board. Rolling starts for this fleet of Club 100 carts. Pace driver will pull off the circuits when notified by race control. And on the clock, 25 minutes. Doesn't sound long, uh, but for many of our drivers, this will almost feel a little bit like an endurance race. It's a quite physical circuit to get right, this one. Pulsitor's first ever racing lap of Clay Pigeon, as we discovered in that grid interview. Yes. So this could be interesting. And it's a big stop down there into Billy's Blind for the first time. I'm just looking at the pace cart driver out of our commentary box window to see if we are good to go. I think we are. The pace cart driver pulls off to driver's right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Round three of the British University's Karting Championship 2021 here at Clay Pigeon is 
go. Good start from the front row. And already Lucas Sullivan trying to get involved there for one of the Oxford Brooks carts. They go into Billy's Blind. Are they all going to survive? Uh, the answer is, Howard, yes. Very good start from the field. Yeah, clean, stylish start. There's a bit jostling though through the S's and there is a cart facing the wrong way. We'll try and look at it. Sure it is, see. yeah, it is. So that's a poor start there for the number three of Exeter A. They need a big day, of course. They missed racing at PF International last week, so they've already used up uh, their drop scores for this season. It's better for the sister team, though, mate. X to be Sam Hampshire to me. Looks like he's got to the head of the field there. That looks to be like it's the number 18 car that's going to lead them out of top end and cross the line as the leader at the end of this first lap. So cross start finish. It is the number 18 leading here at Clay Pigeon. X to be from the University of West of England A. Birmingham A have had a good start. There's a challenge for the lead going into the S's. That's very tight between the 18 and the 25. But X to B hold on for it for now. Yeah, it's been a good start for Felix Connolly there in the UEA car. But look at this, change of position for third is side by side. Uh, indeed for second, sorry, because Sam Rowland has got up to second place there in Birmingham. Well navigated there. He's going for the lead. He's going to be on the outside for the bottom right hander. Uh, Luke Sullivan's in this fight as well as they come through top end. This is what we love to see around Clay Pigeon. Brilliant place to have a bit of a dogfight in the cart, but it's still. Uh, it's still X to be Sam Hampshire in the lead for now. Lucas Sullivan looking very racy. He's gone down the inside there for a move for second place. It's uh, not a good time there for UEA. They've been forced out wide. Sam Rowling and Birmingham A have got back up to fourth place. Good start for Swansea as well. Another one of the teams that missed PFI last week. So looking to uh, start their season strongly. Penalty though for Oxford Brooks B. I'm guessing how is that for a bump and pass? Uh, it is indeed, so that's going to be four positions docked at the end of this one, so they now can't take the outright win, but they're going to have to fight the position as much as they can, and indeed, as they come down the main straight and start a new lap, it's been an amazing run for Lucas Sullivan, and there is a change there for the lead, mate. Lucas Sullivan to the lead for Brooks B, and Sam Rowling in second for Birmingham A. We were looking at some of the brilliant battles happening further back. There is battling going on throughout the field here, but yeah, it's a good start for these drivers at the front, albeit there is now a penalty for our current race leader on the road. Good move there by the number 18, getting back past the 25, so it's to be back up to uh, third place, jostling with the University of West of England. Uh, I also caught an eye just on the, the last lap in 17th place at the moment. Welcome to the Mains Championship of the University of East Anglia. Indeed. Uh, the number 54 had a very strong time in round uh, two at PF International, we said that we've just got a contact warning. Welcome to the mains, as we say. Welcome to the live stream. Curb warning as well for the number 34 leads B. Who come into today, we should mention, as Clubman's leaders. We did have to see that earlier on. Here is the battle over third place, though. Former race leader X to B, currently in third, ahead of University of West of England A. But there is the move, and that was a lovely move into Horseshoe. If they can hang on to it uh, through the latter part of it, they can indeed. So that was a nice, clean move there for third place, and that sees Felix Connolly in the UEA car up to third. So keeping an eye on Oxford Brooks A, arguably uh, the highest of the championship contenders or expected championship contenders in this race so far. They're into the top ten, ninth for uh, the number two car. Daniel Bird is a very experienced driver at the wheel for them. Loughborough A, as we mentioned, took... Uh, Double round victory last week at PF International, um, which was very solid and consistent. Didn't put a foot yeah. wrong the other day. It's still a long way to go in this championship. Lots of racing to do, and they currently sit 15th in this race. Sam Rowland is, oh, and there's the move from third into top end again. This is uh, X to B coming back at UEA. Side by side, down the main straight. Here we go, behind them as well. Good little battle going on between Swansea A and Brooks C over fifth as well and it does go and look at that the 22 of Swansea has judged that brilliantly he's going to surely be trying down the inside no X to uh, excuse me UEA hold on to that one great little exchange this look at this train of about eight carts from third place pretty much the rest of the top ten there this is fantastic stuff they're still side by side coming into the horseshoe there's the 22 of Swansea battling with Manchester A Ocean Bates has had a good lap because he's got well up this train now, this is fantastic. So it's not an easy track to overtake out this one, mate, but it does. there are opportunities, and I always think it produces fantastic battling, particularly in these fast, dry conditions that we've got here. 
Yeah, Bates down the inside uh, of Hockrod there, so Manchester getting past Swansea, and Benjamin Boris is involved there as well in number 45 for Birmingham C. Not sure if he'll be fully eligible for points in this race. Uh, contact warning for the number 22, which is Swansea A down the inside again, number 25 looking for a move there. University of West of England A. There is Ocean Beach with the number 20 is now having a fight with X to B. He looked in good form at PFI last week. And, uh, a driver into another year. The BKC all round there. Was that uh, the number? Didn't quite catch the number. Oh, it's the 18. Was the 18 falling back a little bit? Someone was having a half spin there through top bend. Uh, the number 46. Yes, Warwick C. So it Warwick is. C going to fall down the top 20 there with that spin. And Daniel Marco. But interestingly here, Andrew, if Boris is able to break away from that pack in third place, it does give uh, Birmingham a rear gunner yeah. at the front. Not that they need it, of course, because let's not forget there is that four-place penalty to be applied to Brooksby come the end of this race. So whether Sam Rowland knows it or not about Birmingham Acon, he is sitting in a net win right now. In a way, I mean, if Benjamin Boris is uh, eligible, I, I would mention that because normally races on the Birmingham B team, if the driver races more than once in a round, they, uh, they can't score points in both races. You've got to nominate which one they are scoring for. Uh, but at least at the moment, Birmingham is sitting a net 1-2 at a circuit traditionally, Howard, they don't run well at. Correct. And I think we should acknowledge as well the seriousness. There's a move here. Uh, that is over a ninth place, isn't it? Yeah, Born Warwick A getting past Bourne today. Indeed. And there's uh, UEA A. Great, ha uh, great helmet there on Sam Sanders. Very Mika Hakkinen-esque. Yeah, I'm liking that. Uh, and he's coming through the field very nicely. We started this uh, 27th and he's already up to 12th after some seven minutes of this race. We're going we're gonna to have to work out a convention for how we differentiate between UE as in UWE and UE, UE as in UEA. <laughs> Oh, that that's problem. a new one. Not had that problem before. Here are your race leaders. Lucas Sullivan in that Brooks B car with a penalty hanging over him and Sam Rowling in that blue helmet and black suit. And then here is the train. You can see the battle that's going on as the battle continues uh, between... Uh, that was Loughborough B. Uh, was it Loughborough A and B actually having a bit of an exchange down there? Not entirely sure. Uh, cut away just before he saw that. But there is uh, the University of West of England A, that blue suit. That is... The University of West England A car with Felix Connolly at the wheel. Running really well so far in that fourth place. Uh, and net third, of course, because it's a four-place penalty for Brooks B come the end of this race. There's a curb warning for Loughborough A. Uh, yeah, this is a circuit where they're going to be hot on the curb warnings, particularly coming out the S's at the back of this shot you can see here. Uh, there is a nasty sausage curb on the outside there that is... Uh, not too popular for them to run over. If there's a change of position for 11th place with Scott, uh, no, excuse me, for 12th with Swansea 8 and Loughborough battling there. So James Mills in the car at the moment yep. for uh, Loughborough A. Shake of the head from Lucas Sullivan, not happy about something. And here comes the Birmingham train. Yeah, this is the interesting one, isn't it? Benjamin Boros now in third place is caught right up to the back of them here. So what's the strategy here? Is it push? Is it? Yeah, is it uh, the old bump draft? Yeah, two yeah, engines better say, than yeah. one. Benjamin Boris just needs to sit on the rear bumper now uh, of Sam Rowling and uh, do the dutiful job. Uh, no offence to the Birmingham C team, but they will not be in contention at the end of the season for anything major, any prizes, whereas the Birmingham A team uh, has got a bit of an outside shot, I'd say, this season at a podium position overall and this is a big opportunity for them to pick up their second race win of the season Roy Smith took one at PFI in dominant fashion they definitely are working together well at the moment Lucas Sullivan being close in he'll want to hold on to that position of course though because at the moment he's sitting a net fifth uh, once he takes his penalty but if he starts losing positions he'll fall further back and down the inside goes Rowling for the lead of the race takes it out right and there's a cone penalty now for Lucas Sullivan. So that's more positions for Oxford Brooks B. There's a yellow flag out at top, Ben. But Birmingham A lead, not just in terms of penalties, on, but also on the road here at Clay Pigeon. Yeah, brilliant stuff there. Birmingham had a very strong start. But look at this, Lucas Sullivan is not done yet. He's going to try and come back. He'll know he's got the penalties, but 
he wants to negate them as much as possible. And being as their position penalties, that means you fight. And look at the way that Phyllis Connolly has been able to catch up onto the back of this in that University of West of England A cart. Ocean Beach is just in the back of his shot there in fifth. And there is a look from Benjamin Boros on Lucas Sullivan. And this is exactly it. This is the rear gunner event that we're talking about. He can fight there as there's the still a yellow out. Is there at that corner? Yeah, Can't quite tires spot being, what that's for. Tires being rearranged. Ah, yeah. Yep. Here we go then, on to a new lap. Benjamin Boris looking for a way in, but Lucas Sullivan's going to cover the inside. In fact, he's going to go down the inside. Half in defence, half in attack. He's going to make that work. Lovely move. I always like that move at Clay Pigeon. You think you're going to get it under braking. Actually, it's about the second phase of that Billy's Blind Complex yeah. that really makes or breaks a move there. Ocean Beach, you can see, catching the ball to the back of this in that number 20 Manchester A car. This could well become a five car race at the lead. In fact, who am I kidding? It could become the top 10 come the end of this race if they start fighting. Coming through the top crown of the circuit, as it's known, through top bend. Important to get your exit right onto this because look at the straight that you come onto here. Super crucial. Has Roland got a run? Has Connolly got a run on Boros here for third place? No, he holds station for now. Uh, black flag for Oxford Brooks C, so Alex Page is going to have to make a visit to the pits. There's also a, a place penalty for Newcastle A out there that will be pass. applied. Thank you very much, Howard. Bump and pass, plus four positions for them at the end of the race. Uh, Warwick A have just got themselves up to fifth, so it's a good run so far from, excuse me, up to sixth. So it's a good run from Sam Stevens. Uh, you'll see him sort of start to appear in the back of the shot. Oh, oh big oh. off. That's down at Billy's Blind. Uh, the 44 is one of them. Uh, makes it Trent C. Yeah. Nottingham, Trent Where C. Where were they running in the order? Are they a little uh, bit They were in 24th place. Okay. Uh, so let's look out for somebody else. Can't quite make out the, the race number on the other car with the drive with the black, red, and white helmet. But somebody else will be falling down the order with them. Oxford Brooks C are in for their black flag. Uh, uh, it's the number 24. It's Newcastle A. Oh dear. So <laughs> a penalty and then a, an incident there midway through the race. Yeah, has pretty much ruined Newcastle A's chances in this one. Ocean Beach is now onto the back of this pack of four. It is now a five-car battle at the head of the field. You can see as well there the uh, way that the number 19 Warwick A car with Sam Stevens at the wheel, the white helmeted driver who's just in the back of the shot. He's going to now try and catch on to the back. There he is in the number 19. Yellow flags out for the... Uh, both the carts have now got back up and running at Billy's Blind. They're just putting together the tyre bar, and there is the move from Ocean Beach on Felix Connolly. He's arrived on the scene and bam, he's up to fourth place. That is using his element of surprise down the inside ahead of the S's and that was a lovely move. A lot of experience now, Andrew, with uh, Ocean Beach for that Manchester squad. It's a very good point to make because what, what I'm feeling in this first race of the day, you know, we've got five drivers here, Howard, who have all done at least two years of the BUKC. It's great to see all of them, you know, that we've seen in past years, they've all been capable of pulling a top 10 in in an individual race. But here they are, a year older, a year wiser, all having great races. Ocean Beach, of course, we've seen him win races before. We know his pedigree. I can't remember seeing Sam Rowling of this line. Lucas Sullivan as well. I'm trying to think of a race victory for Lucas. And uh, I'm, struggling, I'm struggling to think one, but as I say, he's always been very consistent. It's good to see him coming through the Brooks fold. Absolutely. Do just want to um, give a shout out. You'll see in the back of shots here, just there, that is still a, a great battle going on uh, at the moment for seventh place between the 18 of X to B and the number 54 of UEAA. So that is. Sam Sanders versus Sam Hampshire, and look at this, this is Ocean Beach going down the inside of Benjamin Boros in that number 45 Birmingham C, so that is Ocean Beach now up to third place, and what that means is this is a move for the lead wow. of the race, down the inside of the hands hairpin, does he make that one stick? Uh, they're still side by side, I think, as they come into the horseshoe, yes, and Sam Rowling's going to try and hold it around the outside for Birmingham A, and there's the rear gunner of Birmingham C trying to nerf his way in as well, he's going to get the job done, but Felix Connolly there is now going to try and get involved in this in the University of West of England A, they'll be side by side through top end, and here we go, it's Lucas Sullivan is out front, but he's got that penalty, remember, it's now Felix Connolly in the University of West of England A, and there is... Uh, what, where has Sam Rollins, uh, Sam Rollins, sorry, is still ahead of UEA there. So, it is Brooks being the lead, but they have a penalty. Then it's Birmingham A, Sam with that blue helmet, black suit there, then the white helmet and blue suit. 
is the University of West of England now with Felix Connolly at the wheel. Fourth place is Benjamin Boris in number 45, but is it? Because Ocean Beach is down the inside of the horseshoe again. Nicely judged move, and he's going to make that one stick through the horseshoe. Through button right-hander they go. They'll go through top bend and slingshot themselves onto a new lap of this clay pigeon circuit. They're just going through shot, by the way, a nice little battle in the lower parts of the top 10. Nottingham Trent A currently in 10th ahead of Bournemouth A and Loughborough. They're having a good little battle. Obviously, Loughborough championship leaders coming into today, looking to make their way up the order. Random grid slots, if we hadn't mentioned it already, by the way. So we're seeing some prominent drivers coming up through the field. Uh, also coming up through the field in 15th now, Max O'Shaughnessy. We saw him have that incident on lap one. Uh, he's now back into the top 15. He's down the inside, goes Felix Connolly and gets the move done. UWEA now to the net lead of the race once Lucas Sullivan takes his penalties. Well, how about this? This would be a brilliant result for the University of West of England. And here comes Ocean Beach now on Benjamin Boris. There's a cone penalty to look for A. And Sam Stevens is on the scene, Andrew. This is now a six cart battle at the front here because Warwick A are on the scene. So this is all getting very tasty at the front here. Six cart battle, and then slightly further down, you've got uh, Brooks A. With, uh, it's Dan Burgess at the wheel for the Brooks A cart. Uh, I want to say in this indeed, one. Yeah. And he's battling with Nottingham Trend A. So there's brilliant battles all the way through here. Uh, but this is fantastic stuff. We're into the well into the latter ten minutes now. Now, if you're watching on uh, the live timing, keep an eye out over the next minute or so. We're about to what I call mini happy hour, except it's not an hour. <laughs> we saw a trend at PF International. Sam Dimlo pointed this out to me that 18 minutes into each race is through. Goes Felix Connolly for the lead on the road outright. Big move there from Connolly. Doesn't change the result per se, because as we know, we know Sullivan cannot win this race because of the penalties. But here coming back now is Sam Rowling trying to fight round the outside. He's got past Sullivan. Here comes Boris as well in the black suits and the white helmets. This is a fantastic way to start racing here at Clay Pigeon today. Oh, oh. Sullivan's out wide. You've got to be on the track. I always think of that top bend as you've got to be on train tracks. There yeah. is a line to be on, and if you're not on it, you are going to know about it. And you saw him skirt out wide there, and he's gone straight to the back of this pack, which, don't forget, would put him well down into the top ten once the final results of this race are taken into account. This is why I love Clay Pigeon, mates. Why, why it's one of my favourites. It produces fantastic battling like this, and this is the best. Don't get me wrong, it's a good fun circuit in the wet. Uh, goodness knows I've had a fair amount of experience in the wet here as well. Yes. But this is my favourite time to be like watching stuff and racing around Clay Pigeons. Brilliant stuff. So let's see, will the lap times drop on 18 minutes as they did in every single race at PF International? The engine's warming up, the air temperature is still quite cold. Let's see if everyone starts picking the pace up for the final seven minutes of this race. Down into Billy's. Felix Connolly still leads for the University of West of England A. He's down in Bristol. There's a cone penalty for the B team. Don't worry, that is not the leader. Sam Rowling trying to find his way through. Benjamin Boris doing a brilliant job as the rear gunner, playing the team game very, very well. Ocean Beach in the number 20 cart for Manchester A. Trying to fish his way through. Uh, just a note on number boards. You will see some carts with black number boards, some with red. Uh, that's the definition between Premier Teams and Clubman teams. Red for the Prems, black for the Clubmans. He is by no means just a very pretty face and a brilliant grid interviewer. Mr. Harris has fashioned us with all of the details of ineligible drivers. Oh, excellent. Benjamin Boros is not eligible for points in this one, so oh, he's just there as the disruptor for Birmingham. Uh, and also, the bump and pass for Lucas Sullivan was for contact with Felix Connolly. Ah, OK. So your current race leader had was was the uh, was the bump and pass e to Sullivan's bump and pass er? He was the bump and passed down at uh, down at Billy's blind. That one, that two yeah, or three early on in the race. See, he's right on it. He's Jacob with that. Our expert informant there, Keith Millingus, up to date. Don't think he does those good inter interviews and then sits in a, sits in a chair at the side of the track. He's here keeping us up to date. This is brilliant stuff though as we head towards the latter five minutes. And there's a, a fair old battle that the leaders are coming up on now, Andrew, actually. I'm just going to have a look at who they're catching up to. Yep, number six is, the, is at the front of that train. Five minutes and 20 seconds to go. And this is really where it gets really tricky 
for a leader, especially if it's your first time at the front. But down the inside goes Ocean Beach for a move on Sam Rowling. Manchester trying to get past Birmingham A, and they've done it. Brilliant move by Ocean Beach into top bend. He does seem this season so far for me, Howard, to be even more decisive in his moves than in previous seasons. Yep, and he wasn't backwards in coming forward in previous seasons, to be frank. So, yeah, he, he has got that confidence, hasn't he, to really throw it in. So they've just put a lap on the University of West of England B cart. Well, they um, will have been very quick. They will have been very quick to get out of the way, indeed. And they're now coming up on the battle between Nottingham A, Imperial A, Swansea B and Oxford Brooks D for 26th down through 29th position. Yep. So this is where it gets difficult, Andrew, because those carts are battling in the latter portions of a race. They're a bit busy, thank you very much. And no blue flags in the no BUKC. Blue flags. They do not have to get out of the way. It's the responsibility of the faster drivers to get by safely. Uh, don't count out Warwick Kay in this one as well, no. because Sam Stevens, if I'm correct in saying he's in the cart, yes he is, he is. Uh, has got past Benjamin Boris and is now up to fourth on the road. Yeah, here it is, here's the negotiation between traffic and uh, leaders. And, and especially now, Howard, with the license system brought in uh, a couple of seasons ago, the standard in this mains championship just keeps getting higher and higher, and, it, and in some ways makes it... Oh, as Felix Connolly really crossed up there, and that's all the opportunity Ocean Beach needs to take the lead. I was just about to say, getting past the back markers is not as easy as it used to be. And there was a classic example of it. The 26 did nothing wrong. No. Nope. Felix Connolly just misjudged it into Billy's blind, and Ocean Beach went, thank you very much, I'll have that and take the lead. Three minutes and 12 seconds to go. Ocean Bates trying to put a, a move there on a back marker. And he's got a bit bolt there. Felix Connolly sensed an aero opportunity, I think, as they went past the Imperial A cart, the number 41. Next down the road is the number six of Nottingham A. That's the last cart in this train. So Ocean Bates is going to go down the inside. And is, oh, that's not such an optimal overtake for University of West of England A. Does that leave him vulnerable to attack from Birmingham A behind in the number 13? No, they're just worrying about getting through the traffic at the hands hairpin. That's fine, uh, and I quite like the fact that immediately battle is resumed between Nottingham and Imperial A. Big um, moments this, sorry, Howard, for, for Ocean Beach. Can he break the toe? Yeah. The toe being huge round here, especially as they come out of top bend here, down over the pit straight, past us in the commentary box and down into Billy's blind. He's, he's very, very nearly there, Howard. If you can put a, another big lap in, he could break the slipstream, and that might be it. Felix Connolly's chances of getting back past might be done. But there's a cone penalty! A cone penalty for Felix Connolly! Well, that's going to demote him at least one position at the end of this race. And put Birmingham A... But no! My goodness! Ocean Beach now has a cone penalty! But... Oh, gosh. Hang on. A, a penalty so, applied from the back, so are, Birmingham so. A are back into a net lead here. If Sam Rowling can keep his nose clean for the next 1 minute and 40 seconds, he's going to take a first ever Mains Championship victory here. And University of West of England A have got to be careful here, because that is a contact warning for them as well. They don't yep. want to make, they don't want to pull bad to <laughs> already pretty bad. And, and that will all have been through the traffic. That yep. will have all been, you know, the tight margins. As I say, it's the responsibility of the faster drivers to get by safely. And both Beach and Connolly, first and second on the road, have both clipped the cones that you see on the inside of corners and have received place deductions. One minute to go, Howard. Two laps. Can I just give a shout-out to someone we, I don't think we mentioned at all as down the inside goes Felix Connolly on the Manchester A cart. But it won't make any difference in terms of who's on for winning this race at the moment with the penalties to be applied. Uh, shout-out to Sam Pooley. In this, there's a penalty, yeah. another one for UEA. Is that for, that's for bump and pass. Yeah. So, so that's, that's four positions. Four. This is uh, not going to be published as it looks on your screens at the moment, folks. Uh, shout out to Sam Pooley, we barely mentioned him there in fifth place in the Nottingham Trent A car. I'm just doing some quick counts. He's effectively he's second, I think. Uh, he is third, maybe, because Manchester A will slot oh, yeah, in. Just the one. Yeah. So it will be Birmingham A, Manchester A, 
and then Nottingham Trente as it currently stands in terms of points awarded oh, for this race. Sam trying to go around the outside. That's an error. That's going to be a mistake. And up into the lead here is Sam Pooley. So Sam Pooley now is in the net lead. Now that will have all been because Sam Rowling doesn't know the full situation. This is what can happen in the BUK some, sometimes. There's penalties all over the place. Pooley and Rowling side by side. This. I know it's all amongst it, but it's for the 60 points in this race. We're coming up to the last corner, Howard. It's going to be a drag race to the line. Felix Conley's going to take it on the road, but has penalties. Ocean Beach has it on the road, but has penalties. It's side by side between Pooley and Rowling, and Pooley takes it. What a race victory for Nottingham Trent. A 60 points to them to kick off the round. What a race. What a start, Howard. That is a fantastic way to get our streamed action of the BUKC 2021 underway. I have just double checked, by the way, folks. Nottingham Trent A received no penalties that I can see on the board during that race. So that, as far as we can tell, they are your legitimate, yep. uh, legitimate race winners. What a brilliant! We barely, we barely mentioned Sam Pooley for most of that race. It just Such was the nature of it. And it closed up brilliantly. What a brilliant way to get things started here at Clay Pigeon. Fantastic! Oh, are you entertained, folks? <laughs> that was well. We've got another nine races of that uh, that to come. Uh, just looking through some of the comments. Uh, hello to uh, Rihanna Percox, formerly of Birmingham, uh, cheering them on. Uh, hello to. Liam Cockcroft as well, my local track in Australia is getting some TV Club 100 uh, spec carts soon. Uh, sounds good, hope you enjoy those. Drivers will come back to Dummy Grid, uh, take a breather. That's their racing done uh, for this round. We'll see all those drivers again in round four this afternoon. But yes, what a, what a race to kick things off here at Clay Pigeon. That was a bit of a belter. Just looking to see if Jacob Harris is ready down there on the grid. We should, and he's not quite ready yet. So we'll that comment's just reminded me. Brand new chassis for these Club 100 yes. carts. Shout out to, uh, to if, if this is maybe your first time watching the British Universities Karting Championship. Hello, welcome. Be aware that uh, we race in this Club 100 machinery. They uh, provide their carts and all of that stuff for this series and have done for many a year. Uh, hello to Sam Spinell, uh, who's raced with Hertfordshire and Coventry uh, over the years gone by. Hello to everyone at Coventry, because they're not able to be with us here today. We do miss you guys. Hope you're back very, very soon. Uh, he says, great race by Sam Pooley. Uh, we are ready to head down to the grid, because I believe Jacob Harris has some drivers to talk to. Jacob, over to you, mate. Back on the track, we are waiting for Sam Pooley to get weighed because we are weighing these drivers. The minimum weight for that one, I'm not quite sure of. Actually, Andrew and Howard will let you know after this. But uh, first, I think we're going to speak to Sam Rowley of Birmingham A, because I asked for Sam to come see me after he got weighed, and they were stood next to each other. Uh, Sam, how was that? Good fun, good fun. Really enjoyed it. I'm not quite sure where I ended up in the end, but, um, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. I know after penalties, Mr Pooley won. Uh, won. Uh, I should say, uh, but yeah, quite a few penalties in the top four is a uh, big battle. Yeah, no, and it's just on the last lap, I think, um, they were defending up into turn two, so I had no, no choice to go around the outside and then just lost out to this man, but, uh, but yeah, very happy with it, very happy indeed. A uh, good start to the day for Birmingham A, who are uh, missing one or two drivers today. Yeah, no, Rory Smith with us sadly today, um, he's got uh, more important things to do apparently. What could possibly be more important than Club 100 carts and the Dorset Sunshine? I'm racking my brains. Never mind. Well, hopefully we'll all be back at Shennington in a couple of weeks' time. But uh, good race, Sam. Thanks very much. Cheers. And Mr Pooley, uh, I believe you won that race. Yeah, so I've been told. I thought I got P3, which I was pretty happy about. But, um, yeah, it's a nice surprise. Well, you were more good than everyone else good here, some might say. Gooder. I think the, uh, the cart helped. It was it was good old, good down straight, but um, yeah, it was just I think the lead, leaders were fighting throughout the entire race, which just allowed me to sort of slowly climb the way back up. So yeah, you must have started a fair bit down then. I started 25th. So yeah, not bad. That's pretty impressive. Is that your biggest, uh, or should I say, worst grid position that you won from? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> 
Uh, I came from 32nd to win a PF last year, so that's my best one today. Well, uh, hopefully we can give you an absolute terrible grid position later in the year to go even better. Well, I'll, I'll try definitely do my best to, but yeah. How's Nottingham Trent's season looking then? Uh, we're here now three races in, for yourself at least. Yes. Um, it's looking okay, actually. We um, At PFI, looking promising in the first round. We, we got a, an unfortunate black flag in that one, which dropped us down to the 17th. But in the second round of the day, we got, I think, P4 overall. So we're, we're sort of in the mix. And then, obviously, this is, this is going to help us massively. Who else have you got racing for you today? We've got, so in the A's, it's myself, Dante, um, Ed, and... Lucas. So, yeah, we're missing, I think, five drivers today. Uh, okay, so, um, good, but how do we rate those drivers that you got in the A's today, then? Right, sorry, can you repeat that? How do we uh, rate those drivers you got in the A team today? I think throughout, you know, like Lucas and Ed have shown some good pace from, you know, last year. And I think, you know, stepping up to the A is going to be too difficult for them. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to see how they get on. Where are you? Well, all the best for them and for yourself for the rest of the day. Hopefully you can get in some good performances across this afternoon and uh, see a good result at the podium. Yeah, th thank you. I'll do my best. Cheers, Sam. Sam Pooley there, winner of race number one for Nottingham Trent. And drivers for race number two are just about getting ready. I'm going to go and interview, I think that's Matthias, for Loughborough in pole position, putting his number plate and transponder on the cart and making the most of those pins. Matthias, how, how are you? Uh, not, too, not too bad, how are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. I like your suit, it's new? Uh, a year old, I put on a bit of weight though. Uh, you can't tell, you can't tell. It looks like you've been training all lockdown uh, and you've got, you've got nice boots and gloves to match. Uh, pole position for you then? Yeah, we'll see what happens. Got a plan? Uh, push the pedals, turn the wheel. Usually works. Certainly uh, it's gone well for me in the past. Uh, who have you got alongside you? Have you had a look at uh, who else is on the grid? Any big names? I have no idea. Good, good. Focus on your own race. That's what we like to hear. Um, Loughborough, then. Are you, are you B or C? Uh, C. And how's Loughborough C's season going? I couldn't tell you. I don't think we did too bad at PFI. Not a brilliant session, though. How did you do, personally? What, what results did we get? Uh... I don't know. I think 23rd to 12th in my first race. I can't remember my second one, though. Is it like a repressed memory? Is it, is it something bad? Possibly. It wasn't too bad, but not great. Nothing to write home about. All right, then I'm going to go see who's lining up alongside you in cart number 41. But you have a good race. Cheers. And in cart number 41, who's this? Harris. Harris. And which university are you racing for? Imperial. Imperial. Imperial had a good round last time out at PFI, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Uh, remind us where you finished and where you are in the championship now. Uh, I, I did Inters last time. Oh, right. So it's a step up for you today then? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what preparations have you taken for this step up? Have you been watching track guides? Have you been taking advice from your teammates? What have you done? Uh, not too much. A bit of Super GT on YouTube. Is he any good? Uh, yeah, he's quite good. Heard good things. And uh, what's your plan then from the front row of the grid? Uh, try not to get mugged by too many people. Uh, probably just aiming for top ten, really. Sensible, realistic achievements. Well, all the best with that, Harris. I shall speak to you later. Cheers. Harris there for Imperial. Let's have a wander back up the grid, see who we've got. We've got Sam Cobb on my right-hand side, Flame Boy himself the uh, most recognisable helmet in the BUKC. Sam, how are you? Not too bad, how are you? I'm good, thank you. It's been a good good uh, start to the season for Cambridge, hasn't it? Yeah, it's all right. We were actually a little disappointed after the second round, but in general, we can't actually complain too much. What happened in the second round? Oh, I couldn't go through a field. I just crashed into everyone, so, yeah, it didn't quite work out as we wanted. Is that why you've got yourself a favourable group position for what is this year, eighth? Uh, tenth, yeah, I'd Apparently, I, a PFI just couldn't overtake, so we decided to avoid that and try and go from the front. You've got some good form here at Clay, haven't you? I seem to remember you doing well in the past. Yeah, I won here last time out. I've won 
a couple of times here. Uh, it's the home track for me, really. It's one I'm at the most. So, yeah, it should be decent. So is a Sam Cobb win here in this race going to launch Cambridge title challenge? Uh, if I don't win it, I'll probably have launched someone. So, yeah, that one of the two will happen. Well, we look forward to watching that. I'm going to have a quick chat to uh, Ben Gilbert in front of you. Cheers. Uh, we've got one more. Ben Gilbert for Swansea, or is it UWTSD? It is the, uh, the fake Swansea, as some might call it, but uh, certainly not me. How are you doing, Ben? Yeah, good, thanks, Jacob. Yeah, you all right? Yeah, not too bad, you know, just enjoying the sunshine today. Got a plan for this race? You're going to win? Uh, I'll give it a go. You know, push the pedals, turn the wheel, see what happens. That's exactly what our pole sister said. And with that, uh, push the button to start the engine, and off they go. This will be race number two. Andrew Howard, back up to you in the comms box. Thank you very much, Jacob. Getting ready, as we say, for race number two. And uh, Howard's got a grid ready for us after this short little stinger. Race two for round three of the BUKC 2021. Here's Howard Mitchell with your grid. Absolutely, mate. Matthias Reed Simpson will take this one from pole for Loughborough C, and he's got Imperial A's Harris Warburton alongside on the front row. Row two is going to be Thomas Sheriff for Warwick B and Hugo Halford Harrison for Birmingham C. Row three is going to be Surrey A's Jake Douglas, and then Sam Middleton will take the Leeds A car alongside Alex Mitchell for Brighton B and Ben Gilbert for University of Wales Trinity and David A will make up row number four row five is going to be University of West of England A's Corey Richards and Sam Cobb the ever experienced Sam Cobb for Cambridge A Southampton A have Pascal Pook and uh, Newcastle A have Adam Fleming for them on row number six row seven is going to be Loughborough B uh, with George Salthouse at the wheel and Josh Craft for Exeter A Row 8 is going to be Cambridge B's Alexa Brett and Cardiff A's Aidan Bliss. Row 9 is going to see the University of East Anglia A's Oliver Greetham and then Simon Stoneham for Nottingham Trent B. Ewan Howells takes the University of Wales Trinity St David B cart from 19th on the grid with Henry Jackson for Nottingham A alongside. Row 11 is going to be Swansea B with Oliver Cox at the wheel and then Ethan Jones for Oxford Brooks D. Row 12 will be Dennis Danilov for Bournemouth A and Sean Bryant for University of West of England B. On to row 13, then Sheffield A will have Elliot O'Toole as and Leicester A will have Adam State. Uh, then it's going to be Brighton A's Nathaniel Gollin and Tim Mountford Lister for Birmingham B on row 14. Row 15 is going to be Manchester A's Kane Shepherd and Callum James for Oxford Brooks A. Row 16 is going to be Brooksy's Curtis Granger. Brad Butcher will take the Brooksby cart alongside and then rounding out the 33 cart grid. It is Jeremy Todd in the Swansea A cart. And I think actually, mate, that this is also, we should say, uh, a race where you and I get to breathe easy because in one sense, which is that all drivers, as far as we are aware, are eligible for points. Yeah, in this one. So that'll make things nice and easy for Andrew filling out the spreadsheet of doom. That's a bit of the track you don't want to run over, isn't it? <laughs> That's a uh, uh, fair few marbles out there. Keep your comments coming in on the YouTube stream. Hello to Elaine C. Big shout out to Sam Pooley. What an amazing talent. 28 to win the race. Go not Trent A. Interesting story for, he, for me here, mate, in that grid. Brooks A, B and C uh, at the back of this grid. Um, that's going to be interesting to see how they work their way up through the order in this yes. one. Three Brooks carts in the last four positions on the grid. Look for them coming up through the field. It's going to be interesting. Several others to look out for there, but that for me is a, is a key story um, from the uh, ever successful Oxford Brooks squad. But we're looking at the front here for the start of race number two. Matthias Reed Simpson in the number 32 Loughborough C with Harris Warburton for Imperial A alongside. I wonder if we're going to be good this time around. Yes, we are. So the pace cart is going to pull to driver's right, and it's going to be eyes on the lights. Engine notes rise, and we are away for race number two of round three here at Clay Pigeon, heading towards 
Billy's blind for the first time. Imperial A is looking down the inside. Are oh, they all through cleanly through Billy's blind? I think I saw a cone go flying, but it looks like everyone's pointing in the right direction at the moment through the S's, though, where it all squeezes up. And no, we've got a bit of a, a contretemps going on there. Several carts involved. There's at least eight carts that have been infected affected in some way or another restart, restart. and it is a race restart and i'm unsurprised to see that given quite how scruffy that got down at the s's oh, there's another two drivers off on the entry to oh, the horseshoe and that's, that's very, very unusual spot. i've not seen that's really odd they've Just clearly there they how are how did that happen that's corey richards on the left of your screen and in all my times i've come here to clay pigeon for club 100 events i've never seen a cart in that barrier no. from that side agreed that's almost I don't know, that's almost like, I mean, you, you can't really do this at a go-kart. It's almost like they tried to put the torque, torque down on the ground and spun the tyres and went into a spin that yeah. way. It's very odd. Very odd. I, I can only imagine that maybe that one of them rode over the nose of the other one. Quite and possibly. Put, put them, one was trying to go down the inside, set up a move into the left-hander at the horseshoe. So the field, as you can see here, will uh, start to encircle the crown again. Some time will be knocked off of our race. Mm -hmm. Corey Richards in the number 25 cart is rolling again. Yep. Uh, Looking in a way, because the, the race had already been called for a restart at that point, so he will be able to retake his grid position. I think the person perhaps most... It looked to me like Harris Warburton got a good start for that one um, from uh, second on the grid. So he managed to be down the inside by the time they got through Billy's blind. It looks like we're immediately ready to go for another start here. Yep. Pace cart is pulling off to one side. So we go again with this. And I don't actually know where the Imperial A cart is. I can't see the 41 at the head of this field, Andrew. So we're going away here. It's Loughborough C who leads them away, Matthias Reed Simpson. And I'm not sure what's happened to the Imperial cart, but there's contact right at the front of the field there. And I think that was Warwick B, perhaps, having contact there. And it's another scruffy start. Multiple carts, including our pole sitter, affected there but at the moment the start looks like it's been called good so we looked to the head of no it was our pole sitter who survived apologies look for at the head of the field and leading the tyres reed simpson uh, heads towards the horseshoe as we look at the cart various carts battling away through the hands hairpin well it was cleaner in the latter part of the lap but andrew at least five carts i think went off in some shape or form down at billy's blind there number 53 is at a spin as well towards the uh, rear of the field coming through the horseshoe that's uweb so uh, not the best of starts for the ueb teams at the moment three wide going over the kick penalty for oxford brooks a straight away the number 15 down the inside of 41 there that's leads a on imperial a carts involved in an incident then on that first lap to me but it looks like birmingham c and warwick b were you two from near the front and then sheffield a and university of west of england b have also had some kind of issue on that first lap uh i'm just imperial ar circulating mate so they just must have not resumed the correct grid slot or something yeah. after the after the full start penalty for nottingham a as well the number six has not been a good start a very un nottingham like uh day so far for them so they'll have some penalties uh, places deducted at the end of this race change for the lead though here andrew surrey a's jake douglas has got into the lead of this one as there's a move there that was the brighton b cart he's gone straight to a spin there that is uh, alex mitchell he's, at the he's wheel joined. he's joined by someone towards the back of the field that's a horrible place to have a spin matthias reed simpson back down the inside of surrey a for the lead at the hands hairpin and there in the uh, in the Cambridge A card is Sam Cobb, but he's got the attentions of the University of West of England A in that 25. That's Corey Richards trying to put the move in, but Sam Cobb's going to have the inside through these top two right-handers, and that might hang out uh, the UEA card to dry. No, uh, yes, it is. It's going to allow Newcastle A to get up into that fourth-place spot. So battle has been joined at the front of the field. Contact warning for Birmingham C. Unfortunately, they already were involved in an issue on that first lap. There's the number three of X to A trying to get involved as well in this one. Penalty for Swansea B, the number 50. So quite scrappy this, to be honest, at the start of race number two. Corey yeah. Richards down the inside uh, for UEA on Newcastle A again. Can he get it done round buttons? No, he's actually going to open the door for X to A to come back through. So X to A up to fifth. Yeah, Josh Kraft at the wheel of that extra eight effort. Got a bit of uh, experience in this Club 100 machinery. Matthias Reed Simpson leads for Loughborough C then. Then it is Surrey A's Jake Douglas in second place. Sam Cobb for Cambridge A in third in the number five. 
And there is Sam Cobb down the inside, in fact, down the inside of Jake Douglas at the hands hairpin. He's going to get that Cambridge car up into second place. And a little uh, point to the head which says, don't fight me too much here, let's not lose sight on uh, the leader ahead. Let's work together, if anything, to get onto the back of Matthias Reed Simpson. As behind them is that Newcastle A and Exeter having a go. No, it was the 24 and 25, so it's Newcastle A versus University of West of England A down the straight and down the inside there goes University of West of England A to try and reclaim it. But they're still fighting as they go, and it stays with Newcastle A for now, that, uh, that fifth place. It was a classic Billy's blind situation there for Corey Richards. He went for the big send, but the, the track slopes away for a driver uh, the further to driver's left that you get. And he just got on that patch, but very hard to get the front end of the car to, to pull around and get into the corner. And that offered the opportunity for Newcastle to A to get back on the lead. Big send <laughs> from Oxford Brooks D, the number 26. If I can see. Uh, Henry Jackson started to come through in the number six Nottingham A cart. Yeah. There he goes down the inside of number 11, the number 15, uh, and Brooks A. 41 having a bit of contact. Yeah, yeah Imperial sorry, A. a. And Brooks so. A, sorry, Brooks A on the day was what we saw into that Billy's blind. And Brooks A have got to yeah. be careful, haven't they, mate? Because they've already accrued a penalty. Yes, I think you are. Uh, right. I mentioned that one of the stories of this race would be the Brooks carts trying to work their way up through the field, but they've got to do it cleanly. And there's the black flag. There is the black flag. Multiple pieces of contact. Uh, Yes. Yeah, multiple ABC bump and pass. So that'll be uh, Brooks A into the pit lane. And you were talking earlier today, mate, about how the license system has improved the standard. A black flag at the moment in BUKC mains. That's your race done for pretty yep. much. That is a visit to the pit lane, and uh, it's going to be nigh on impossible to salvage something there. As there was a nice move uh, from the uh, the Imperial A, sorry, the Brooks A car on Imperial was it? Yeah, but Imperial A running wide again, you know, running over the berm as I say, mm. uh, getting out wide, the track sloping away from the driver again, and that offered the opportunity for Brooks A to get up the inside. Have we covered the change for the lead here? With Sam Cobb no, at the head of the field, ahead of Matthias Reed Simpson to Sam Cobb. Surely, I, I think, it, the, the most experienced driver in the field. Um, for a long time it was Scott Michaels of Southampton. It was, yeah, managed yeah. To it through 100 BUKC races. So yes. We do need to do the tally up. We I'm do. pretty sure oh, I'm Cobb has gone over that. I'm really now. hoping Sam can keep his score himself because I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, but yes, I uh, I remember, well, I say remember racing against him. I remember being on the same circuit as him. Uh, we could be that. Uh, is the number 17 of Southampton A, Pascal Pook there, one of the drivers trying to work his way up through the field, currently in a battle with Loughborough B, and uh, I think that might be Brighton A uh, as well. Yep. Uh, so, and Leeds A involved as well. Leeds an interesting one at the moment. The Leeds B team higher placed than Leeds A after PFI. There is a small thing there of Prem's class versus Clubman's class, which I know we haven't covered too much, but the two subclasses within our mains championship all scored together, but there's still silverware on offer and the championship at the end of all this is there's a re-showing, I presume, of the black flag for Oxford Brooks Eggs. They've yet to come in to serve their first black flag, which is obviously um, a, a bit of a no-no. Well, I don't want to say a bit of a no-no. It's a lot of a no-no. Mm. Keep your eyes on that digi flag every time you go past start, finish. Cambridge A leads uh, with Loughborough C in second place. We're looking here at the battle of the 15th, 16th and 7th, uh, excuse me, 14th, 15th and 16th got through by the fact that it's the number 15 and the number 17 involved in the battle. <laughs> um, but yeah, Brighton A looking for any way past Leeds A. Heading towards the hands hairpin. And there was the move, I think, just coming yeah. into shot there. Uh, Brighton A trying to get by. It's 15th for Brighton A now, 12 and a half minutes to go. So we're at the halfway stage uh, of the allotted time for this race. We had a couple of minutes knocked off, didn't we, for the false start. X to A are up to second place. Number three, pass Luff Proceed now. There is Jackson for Nottingham A, a former individual heavyweight drivers championship winner around this place a few years ago. So say, do you need to serve this black flag? Don't want to get uh, 
the even greater wrath of race control at this stage of proceedings. So, the interesting one for me now is can Josh Kraft find any pace to start to challenge Sam Cobb at the front here? Because I mean, we're here looking at the battle again between Newcastle A and University of West of England A. It's a great little battle. And then there was the number six you just saw of Nottingham A battling away with Brooks C as well. Brooks C currently the best effort from those Brooks carts trying to get from the back yeah. um, so far. And there is the change for position for fourth place. But this is an interesting look here from Newcastle A back. He's trying to get the switch back, but I don't think it's going to work. He's got to be careful because he's got Jake Douglas just behind in that Surrey A cart. So Cambridge A continuing to lead here. 1.2 seconds is the gap. Sam Cobb over Exeter A's. Josh Crafts, you confirmed there on the time Corey Richards, University of West of England A, now back to fourth place in the number 49 of Surrey A. Welcome Surrey A to the Mains Championship as well. They're uh, one of the teams promoted from the Inters Championship and uh, right from the queue, they've gone down the inside and taken fifth place there away from Newcastle A. The Inters Championship the second tier of this competition. They'll be racing here at Clay Pigeon tomorrow. And finally, the number two of Oxford Brooks yeah. A comes into the pits for its black flag. And as you say, Howard, that is their race run. Uh, they will go back out on circuit, but they won't get any form of position to write home about. That is them done as a back up the inside. Newcastle A on Surrey A. Nice move there. Block pass into the S's. Back up to B5. Yep. Good move there from Corey Richards. Been managed, they've just managed to drop a little bit uh, Adam Fleming in that Newcastle cart, these two at the moment. There's your race leader, Sam Cobb. And you can see, Andrew, I, I think Josh Craft is. He's closing in. He it's is closing in. a second now. Yep, took two tenths out on the last lap. And what's it going to be this time around? It's another two tenths out of the lead this time. So Josh Craft in that extra A cart is beginning to apply the pressure to Sam Cobb. Now... And traffic coming into play as well, yep. Howard. Yeah, um, absolutely. We've seen this before at Clay Pigeon. It is, it's a very hard circuit uh, on your own to keep yourself out out front. And remembering some super finals in previous years where we've seen drivers disappear down the road. And you think, oh God, they've got it won, and they get reeled back in by a pack because the slipstream is so strong around here. And I think it's also a circuit that's very easy to overdrive. Oh, yes. You know, we've seen already, we saw in that last race with Lucas Sullivan just skirting out wide at top bend, and the classic one for me would be the hairpin here, actually. It was so easy to go, it's a hairpin, I must optimise the braking, and then you actually end up going a little bit wide there. So, Sam Cobb, very experienced, but, yeah, it's a difficult one to be out front as who's that battling uh, just in there that was Brooks A back out from there ah flag. yes it is and I think that's Brooks A moving, moving up for last to penultimate last just to demonstrate the point of how the black yeah. flag can impact your race don't understand them staying out as long as they did mate because even though yes a black flag is usually going to be the end of your race you may as well serve it early to give yourself as much time left in the race for it back to come up. back to you yeah so eight minutes to go uh, we didn't see golden happy hour for the car engine in that first race. Maybe the nature of the circuit a little bit shorter than PF International. Let's see what Sam Cobb can do here. Now this could either be a help or a hindrance the Oxford Brooks A car being directly ahead because in some ways, well it's a back mark, you want them out the way as we're looking at the battle between the number 23 and 12. Uh, he's putting a lap on them. Yeah. It's on the chef. Field, one of the Sheffield cars. That's a beautiful bit of driving from the Brooks C driver, uh, positioning his car because he was under attack from uh, Surrey A there. They hold on to sixth place. Oh, it's out wide. Go and Henry Jackson's not happy at all there with the Newcastle A driver in the number 24, uh, but he has gained position. That's Adam Fleming driving for. Newcastle A at the moment. I just want to mention Sam Middleton in the Leeds A car has just got himself back up into the top 20. Leeds A, Andrew, needing a good result because yep. what we haven't been able to cover is the fact that they were excluded from race one. Uh, ah, there's a mechanical flag. The for Cardiff A. That's not good news for the manager. I was going to say, there's a particular person in the box with us who's Oh, black happy. flag for Henry Jackson. 
Now, I'm guessing is that for a bump and pass and contact, Howard? Uh, it is, Nottingham yeah. Bay, but Henry Jackson, as the leader's trying to get past Brooks A here, Brooks A not in the competition for the race win. Cobb gets through. But there's Josh Kraft in the number three, X to A. We're not present at PFI. Brooks A fighting back. Well, that's yeah, a little bit naughty problem, in my it? book. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. You can see the frustration from Sam Cobb, because, to be honest, Brooks, your race is, I mean, I suppose you're not technically last on the road, but... Gosh, yeah. what's the gap from them to the next car down the road? It's something like... Well, I can share Cobb's frustrations there because he is the race leader. He's got second place bearing down no, on I, him. I agree, yeah. And a back marker, irrespective of their pace, sending it back up the inside is, is Brooks, not what you want. Brooks have eight seconds between them and the car ahead. This is not really... And this could... I mean, I think Cobb's dealing with it as well you can. Yes. Uh, not getting too frustrated. But Josh Kraft is going to be able to... Uh, smell the opportunity here albeit if Cobb can get by and stay by no there's Josh Kraft he's been able to negotiate that really well and now here are your two leaders nose to tail through the horseshoe now is that it for Brooks A trying to unlap themselves or are they going to be trying to to get that back well from Cobb's perspective the damage is done because now Josh Kraft is right on his rear axle and Loughborough aren't that far behind either Andrew yeah but Tyus Reed Simpson having an absolutely fantastic race here oh. down the inside goes the Brooks A driver on Josh Kraft so that helps Sam Cobb I think to this be, time round Josh Kraft did I think break a little too late there for Billy's blind went wide and, and gave the opportunity but yeah this is I, I know that Brooks A are a very uh, experienced and, and rapid team of, of drivers, but this isn't, for m from my perspective here, mate, this isn't the best conduct if you know that your race is over. Um, and there'll be a drop score anyway, so it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not going to really count they've towards just gone, I mean, day. they've just gained a position, funnily enough, on Swansea B, yeah. the number 50 cart that got out the way there. But yeah, this is making a bit muddled here at the front, and I think that's Le C now past the track effect as well. So Matthias Reed Simpson may be a factor as we're within the last five minutes of this second race. And cone oh, penalty. cone penalty that's from huge. Cobb. So Sam Cobb has picked up a cone penalty, and just as we saw in the previous race, your race leader on the road has a penalty. He now cannot win this race. He cannot win the race. Actually, no, I tell a lie. Every single driver <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the field could get a cone penalty and then it's negated. But that's highly unlikely to happen. So, well, if you're Josh Kraft now, I just sit on Sam Cobb's rear bumper. I just sit on that Cambridge rear bumper, push him along, keep the gap to look for C behind. That's the only thing, I think, mate. Is that race win. I think that's the only factor that makes me challenge that statement. Yep. Keep the gap to look for C. I don't know if they can. How about Corey Richards as well? Yes. First start, it got uh, nullified. The restart flag came out. He was in the wall. He was embedded in the plastic bollards on yep. the edge of the horseshoe. Three minutes 35 to go. He's sitting in fourth place at the moment, which would be a fantastic result for the University of the West of England. Another driver, similar to as we said in the first race, Howard. He's been around for a couple of years now. He's got that experience now and he's fighting right at the front of the field. Track limit penalty for Leeds A. I want to say that's two places to be docked at the end of the race from memory. Oh, and there's a tag of the tyres by the Brooks A cart there as well, and the S's. So I wonder if that's going to be a cone penalty for them. Look at how Sam Cobb's, Cobb's still defending against Josh Kraft here. But bear in mind, has got that cone penalty. One position deduction. And there's the cone penalty yep. for Brooks A, as predicted. That was a fair old whack to the tyres that they gave there. And it's JV stood down there by the SSC. So he's he's gonna gonna <laughs> you're not going to miss anything, is JV. No. I, yeah, I, I, yes. I'm still not sure. I guess they are on the pace, but uh, it's an unusual thing to have with the traffic. I know you were talking about just last race about it being difficult to get by the traffic. Yep. Um, at the moment, that gap to the third place battle between Loughborough and University of West of England A is being maintained. Um, as there's uh, East Anglia have just got themselves up to ninth place, is that, mate? Yeah, another really impressive race here from the newcomers to the Mains Championship. Another team promoted, and just as I say that, wow, that is a commentator's <laughs> curse, Harpoon. Welcome to the Double Dash Motorsport Media Experience, UEA. You've just got a penalty. It is, yeah, Oliver Greetham at the wheel of that. Still a good effort, but with that cone penalty, that was 
have you been uh, have you been brewing up a higher concentrate more highly concentrated it's commentator not been skills? used through the first three months of the year so it's pretty strong today i mean if anyone's been watching our eye racing antics during lockdown mate we, we commentate to curse ourselves frequently oh yeah <laughs> so it's all fair and above board here's your third place battle then the tyres reed simpson in that love for c card and corey richards in the University of West of England, a number 25. I'm going to go with West England and East Anglia rather than saying UE all the time. Yeah, That's what I'm going with at the either. moment. So West of England in that fourth place. And there you just saw the 12th place, Brooksy Car, the sole Brooksy car that has been successful in that mission of getting forward cleanly. Curtis Granger at the wheel. I don't think I've seen a single warning or penalty for them so far. So that is a very good effort from Brooksy so far. And still... Uh, there they are, the Brooksy, the number 12 car. You can just see them at the back there. And in fact, they've got by University West of England A. That's a change. That's Brooksy. No, I'm nope. getting myself confused. Apologies, Brooksy. apologies. Love Brooksy. The last digit was a two, and that's enough to throw me, folks, apparently. Um, of course, still, still learning some of the numbers here in our first, first stream of the year. But yes, still a good effort. And you just saw the number 49 of Surrey A doing well as well in this one. I've been impressed with their drive so far. Uh, Jake Douglas doing a fantastic job there, but we are on the last lap, mate. We are indeed, and at the moment, X to A are sitting in a winning position, and what would give them 60 points for the round, just to re uh, reiterate on the points system. Each race, 60 points available for a race winner, 59 for second, 58 for third, you get the picture down through the order. Each team races four times. Three of those scores get tallied up, team with the most points uh, come the end of the round get, gets 60 points and 60 championship points which will tally up at the end of the year to decide who wins the race. Last lap here across the line, Sam Cobb takes it on the road but has a penalty, Josh Kraft, good sportsmanship there between the two drivers Josh Kraft wins for X to A and that's a way to come back to the BUKC after X to A missed out at PFI, they weren't there a race win for them to kick off their season properly. Loughborough C, Matthias Reed Simpson, that's what you need to do from pole position, Howard, if you're one of the lesser teams. Maximise the points, P3 for them, very good. Yep. Corey Richards with one of the best drives I've ever seen him have for UEA there in fourth, University of Western England, uh, having been lodged in a barrier on the first start. That's a great way to respond. Oxford Brook C, Curtis Granger, great drive for him, finishes P5. Surrey A with I think that's going to be their best result on record in the BUKC on their main debut P6. Oxford yep. Brooks D7, University of East Anglia in 8th, Imperial 9th, another strong result for Imperial, University of Wales and Trinity St. David, uh, Trinity A there in 10th. Uh, Loughborough B and Brooks B 11th and 12th, Southampton A solid there in 13th, their South Coast rivals Brighton A in 14th, Trinity B in 15th, Newcastle A, Cambridge B, Trent B, Manchester A and Leicester A wrap out the top 20 and that brings an end to race number two here at clay pigeon gonna be honest mate not as good as race one it was a little bit too scrappy for my liking uh, yeah. there yeah just a little bit we still had a very interesting race at the front there i yep. think and there's some good midfield battles as well um but yeah we'll be hoping for a little bit of cleaner racing a bit more race one styley into our middle race of the round just checking out for uh, Mr. Harris being ready. He is ready indeed. He's going to have a chat with some of the drivers there from race number two. Jacob, over to you. Well, that was a spicy one. Race winner Josh Kraft is approaching me now. I'm not sure he knows he's the race winner. Okay, so drivers I'm just going to heat number three. You should be waiting him. by the grid entrance down the back of the circuit there. Josh, congratulations. Oh, this is the Did exit only. Win? I'm not going to let you in. That's okay. entrance yeah. up there. That's quite good, Edgeway isn't it? The yeah, there's cone penalty, I believe, for that man over there, Mr. Sam Cobb. Yeah. Uh, so you inherit the race win? Yeah, it was, I, I didn't know he had a cone penalty, to be fair, but I see there was a, I think it was, there was a back mark in yeah, front of us messing off. about, so I thought I don't, there's no point in doing anything stupid. So, yeah, it was a good race. And uh, a good start for Exeter's day, given he missed out last week. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've got to be pretty much perfect for the rest of the season now if we want to have a chance at the title, so it's a pretty good way to start. And uh, who have you got in for the rest of the day? You've got uh, some good drivers with you today. Uh, yes, we've got Max O'Shaughnessy, who had a bit of a tough race this morning, but he's very quick. Uh, 
Ryan Luscombe, who is very quick as well. And then Jensen, who's uh, starting on pole in the next one. So, double okay, victory, so hopefully. As quick as you can, Jensen, I hear, has been uh, busy with his eye racing this week. Have you been doing any sim work yourself? Uh, not this lockdown. I did the first lockdown, but I don't know. I prefer the real thing. Don't we all? Uh, but congratulations on your race win, Josh. Very well done. Josh Craft there of Exeter A, winner of race number two. Let's go see who's lined up on the grid for race number three. I did see Sam Cobb run past, but I think that ship has sailed now for a quick chat with him about his cone penalty. So we'll make our way down to the grid for the start of race number three. We've uh, not got many drivers down here yet, but we do have our pole sitter. Just putting his number plate on now. Who have we got here? Jensen Brown. Jensen, and who are you racing for today? Exeter, eh? Of course. Uh, I was just told by Josh about your sim racing exploits. How are you looking then for today? You, you prepared? Uh, yeah, sort of. Haven't been in the cart for a while, but um, we'll see what happens. When was, when was the last time you were in a cart? Last time here. Eh? Um, September, the UKC. And how did you fare? Um, yeah, not too bad. Had two good races. Um, yeah, it, it was all good. Can we expect to see you convert this pole into a win? Hopefully. Yeah, I'll try my best. Ireland, Jensen, thank you very much. Enjoy. I'm going to speak to the man who's going to try and challenge you with that, Josh Ladd. And it's a welcome back to the mains for Cardiff. Thank you. It's good to be here. How are you doing, Josh? You all right? I'm good. Good. You uh, looking forward to, what was this, the third now mains championship race? Yeah, highest I've ever been, I think. Well, starting. And uh, how did you get on at PFI? I came seventh in both races. Started fourth and came seventh, then started 23rd and came seventh. So, it can only, well, hopefully I'll get sixth at least. Nice to see a bit of consistency, though, at least. And you've got a nice shiny helmet as well. I take it this isn't your first rodeo. Yeah, it's so much, so my parents to see me on the stream, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. What kind of racing have you done before, then? Tell us, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, I do a lot of sim racing. Um, yeah. Do you need a helmet for that, do you? No, unfortunately unfor not. <laughs> it's more comfortable in the sim, isn't it? <laughs> How many keyboards have you broken in your sim racing career? Um, one, two. Two? Two. two. That's impressive. You know, you're a calm, collected kind of guy then. I've got no space bar on one. So, <laughs> um, yeah, not ideal. Bit of an issue. What are we expecting to see from you today then? Have you, how good are you around clay and what do you reckon on the competition around you? Well, I was P3 in the test, like pre-event test, so that was okay. Um, I'm just going to try and not get binned. I think everyone, same for everyone, isn't it? And if someone doesn't say that, they're probably doing a bidding. Uh, and Josh, is it right for MPs to take higher positions in private companies and then seek money from the government in terms of cash grants? I can't, no comment. And it's understandable from a man in your position. Well, thanks for talking to us. Thank you. And have a lovely race. Let's see who's lined up on this side of the grid in this fancy looking suit. We have Matthew Hudson, a newcomer for Warwick, I believe. Yes, from Warwick, eh? And you had a good time out at PFI, I believe you won a race. Yeah, we won the first race, starting seventh, so quite a good race, and then fourth from 20th in the second round. Not too bad at all. Uh, tell us a bit about your karting pedigree then. You've obviously uh, been to a circuit or two before. Yeah, racing Senior X30 recently with um, Mick Barrett Racing, so did a little bit of um, British racing, so that was all good. And how have you found the UKC so far? It's good fun, really good fun, close racing, it was really good fun at PF, so uh, really good really good for a bit of um, fun, just good laugh. And would you say the BKC is the best karting series in the world? <laughs> well, possibly. No, that wasn't a question, that was a request. Would you please say the BKC is the best racing series in the world? Oh, in that case, BUKC is the best kite series in the world. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, it's really nice of you to say, unprompted as well. We're going to have a quick chat now with the Manchester captain, I believe, Michael Grieve. Michael, how's it going? Oh, not too bad. Having a lovely sunny day today. And where were you last week? Uh, last week? I was at home. <laughs> uh, so we had an event at PFI. I'm not sure if you heard, but uh, I missed you. Oh, I've missed you too. I missed P5, I couldn't make it, I was really, really sad. Oh. Well, you're going to have to make up for it now. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure I really heard what I was saying then. Off we go then for race number three.
This looks like uh, a decent one in terms of talent. Andrew and Howard, back up to you guys in the comments. Welcome back, everybody, to live coverage of the BUKC. We're going into race three of round number three. Let's have a look at your grid for this one. On pole position for X to A will be Jensen Brown. Alongside him on the front row is Ollie Underwood for Newcastle A. Uh, row two, Josh Ladd, very quick in the iRacing Legends of Club 100 of BUKC Championship. Starts P3. Uh, Matthew Hudson for Warwick A alongside him on the front row. Swansea B and Southampton A are on row three. Simon Withers going for Swansea. Chris Sheffer for Southampton A. Birmingham B have Max Wade on row four. Alongside him on that one is Will Toon from Nottingham Trent B. Row five has Michael Grebe returning for Manchester A and Benjamin Boris. Second time he's been out today. This time he's in the Birmingham A cart and he is eligible for points. Row six has Alex Holloway going for Sheffield A and Jason Smith going for Bournemouth A. Row seven, John Woodhead for, uh, for Leicester A and Ryan Davies for Trinity B. Uh, row, uh, row number eight, rather, Joe Perkins goes for Brighton, uh, Warwick B, and Nathan Little for Brighton A. Row nine, Daniel Gilbert goes for Leeds A, Charlie Bennett for Loughborough A. Row ten has Nottingham Trent A's Edward McDade alongside Bryn Griffiths for Swansea A. Row eleven, Ryan Denny drives for Brighton B, Andrew Hind goes for Loughborough C. Row 12, Dom Cousins drives for Cambridge B. Was very quick in the practice session earlier on this morning. Sam Johns, very quick round here as well, drives for Trinity A. Julio Peroni starts P25 for Cambridge A. William Stacey joins him there for Leeds B on row 13. Uh, Cristiano Sigolo goes for Surrey A on row 14 alongside Charlie Lamb. Very experienced driver for Nottingham A. Matthew Fennell drives for Imperial A. Uh, on row 15, Johnny Knight for uh, Warwick C. X to B, Ben Wallace alongside Jasper Chamberlain for UEB. Last but not least, 33 cars in the field. It's Nottingham Trent C's Kellen Vage. And welcome to the comms box for a new voice to the BUKC commentary team. Uh, he's already been out on circuit, so he can tell us all about, about it. It is from Cardiff A. Welcome. Mr. Me Mo Mr. Moto Meerkat himself, <laughs> John Ratcliffe. John, welcome to the box. Hello, sir. Thank you for having me. I am uh, very, very honoured to be here, sir, with the Double Dash boys. Thank it's going to be great fun. We've already had some fantastic races today, so yep. I'm excited to see how this one goes. But as you say, I was out in the pre-event test earlier, and I forgot how demanding this circuit really is. Yeah. Super fast, super quick, but everyone is so close on times that these races are just guaranteed to be epic. So hoping for another good one uh, in race three. So race three... Five races in total. This is our uh, Inter's weight. Uh, all of these races are uh, classified by weight. And it looks like we are about ready to go. X to A on pole position there. This is a good chance for them to get some more big points on the board. This is their third race of the day. And also I might be a little bit biased in this one with Josh Loud on uh, row two. Yeah, very intrigued to see how Josh does in this one. We're going to go around oh, we're going again. again. Because I say, Josh Ladd, the iRacing wizard, he really is discovered on uh, over on the Double Dash Motorsport Media uh, channel with uh, the iRacing Club 100 BUKC Championship. Next round, of course, next week, next uh, uh, Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, will be at Imola for racing. And that do go check that out. But yeah, starts P3 here. Also, really good to see Cardiff A uh, back in the mains championship. I'm not just saying that. There's a Cardiff team member to my right. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we've missed them for a few years in the Mains Championship. We were a long stay before that. Looks like we are good to go, though, for race number three here at Clay Pigeon. It's all down to X to A. Can they get a good start? Yes, they can. Very good start. And Josh Ladd's going to follow them through as well and already be into second place as they go through Billy's Blind. Looking a little bit scrappy at the back. There's a few carts off. Three wide uh, in the middle. Charlie of Lamb is one of them for Nottingham A. But I don't see the restart flags coming out, John. It looks like we are looks good, like to, good go to go here in race three. Very nice. Seeing the big spin, huge spin into the barrier. The Tony Kart driver must be frustrated with himself there. Yeah. Try and get back on track now. 
catch which uh, number that was in a minute. The driver's going to have to drag the cart back out of the tyres there. I know what that's like. I've been down there in years gone by. Penalty for Brighton A, number 27. As so this cart's all... going, well, four wide into the final corner there. Very interesting. They're still three wide going down the main straight. How's it going to look into the first corner, though? Exeter A lead, Cardiff A second, Newcastle A up to third, Swansea B having a good run so far in P4. It's getting very tight in the middle of the pack here. This is all over about 14th place. Ben, uh, Birmingham B are involved there. There's still the recovering driver uh, who was off on lap number one. Uh, I think it's Bournemouth A. Bournemouth A have not come round and registered a lap time at the end of lap one, so they are well and truly out of this one. Not looking great for them, is it? As it's still super close up the front. We've got about four drivers fighting over around, I believe that's fifth or sixth position. And then just a huge train back from there. As I said before, everyone's so close. As we're now looking at the battle for second, Josh Lag getting crashed into the first corner. 24 dies up the inside, makes a little bit of contact on the inside of his car, but makes the move stick. And the man behind him is going to look to through as, as well. He does indeed. Number 20 going past Josh Ladd, Cardiff A moving down to P4. But behind them, still so many carts in huge amounts of battles. This race already hotting up. We've barely even started yet. Yeah, Michael Grieb driving there for Manchester A in the number 20. He's done a good few years of the BUKC. Good to see him back once again. Ollie Underwood driving for Newcastle A at the moment in the number 24. Long way to go in this one, of course. 23 minutes, or the best part of 23 minutes on the clock. Black flag for Brighton A. So they had an ABC takeout penalty already. They've now received a black flag. Track limit warning for the number 23 of Sheffield A. I know too much about black flags. May got a black flag at PFI. <laughs> beside myself, absolutely beside myself. So I know it's pain. Down the inside there of the number 50 goes the number 27 of Brighton A. So that is sixth place on the road, but as we say, that cart has a black flag. They will be coming into the pits shortly. 11 with an, an interesting move there. Managed to use the man on the outside as a bit of a break, but managed to stay on track, and he uh, lost quite a few positions. It's going to be frustrated there. But look at that huge gaggle of cars. There's about 10 in a train there. Oh, my goodness. Look at them. Number 40 leading them with the white helmet down into turn one, and it's just one gigantic gaggle will they make it through turn one they do indeed with a little bit of contact 11 on the inside pushes number 30 i believe that was out wide and uh dropping back a little bit but still following one by one through the s's as we move down into the heaven move being attempted by leicester a there the number 48 uh, another team who have been able to race their way through and yeah i was expecting that one penalty for trinity a that'll be an abc bump and pass for the misdemeanor down into billy's blind plus four positions for them at the end of the race uh, but leicester a 48 ranked team it's john woodhead driving for them at the moment in his orange suit I had a good race with john when i uh randomly uni of life it into a into an interest race a couple of years ago at Wilson Mills. good to see him here in the mains and just to, to give us that impression John because obviously you've, you've raced through as Cardiff from Inters last year got that promotion into the mains what have you found is the big difference so far between an Inters race and a mains race everyone's just so much closer in the mains mate honestly the pace is just everyone is there I feel like at the Inters obviously we have uh, a lot more newer Carters in the yeah. Inters so there's a bit more of a discrepancy in pace but here especially at a fast track like Clay Pigeon everyone's within a few tenths of each other it's all so fast all such close racing and that's why today we're seeing these guys battling in such massive packs but that's why you've got to love the BUKC it's just fantastic to watch coming down into Billy's blind here we've got the 49 on the inside of the 18 the team running a little bit wide uh, just trying to track which position this is for this is Surrey A actually it's all over 21st place so Surrey A up to P21 the black flag out again for Brighton A need to come into the pits uh, to have that one there's a driver stranded there just in the background of shots coming out of hairpin uh, John if you can catch the I believe that's 38 number. thank you very no, much no 30 my 30. apologies 30 that's Nottingham Trent B who were in 18th place they won't be there much longer that spin for them is going to take them down the field curb warning for uh, Loughborough A we've had a quiet day so far seen them at the front of the field so far. Charlie Bennett's currently in the cart for them. Battle raging on. This is the 39 uh, and the 18. So this is over 22nd place. 39 of Cambridge B and X to B in the other car. 
the number 18. Number six, Mr. Lamb makes the move around the outside there at the uh, at the hairpin. A lovely move. Squeezes uh, the other man out wide and, and gets it done. But he's looking he's looking very quick, pushing he, through the pack. He is indeed. He's already up to it's not that that's going to be 20th place, and he was involved in the incident at the start of the race. Uh, more penalties coming in, fortunately. Track limits for Newcastle A. They've been touching JB Sausage too much there. That's not allowed. That's a penalty. And contact, multiple pieces of contact for Leeds A. Being a bit too rough and rough and northern. I know all about that. And that's a penalty yep. for them as well. 18 minutes to go. Still X to A leading out front from Newcastle A. However, Newcastle A have just set the fastest lap of the race. 40.886. But, as we mentioned, have a track limit uh, penalty. So, they, again, another situation where there's a cart out towards the front that we know cannot win this race at the early stages because of the penalty. You know, funny you say that with the uh, with the fastest lap. I was chatting with uh, some of the guys earlier, and it seems today just to be so much quicker generally around the circuit. Yeah. Everyone's going much faster than they were in uh, club ch um, not club champs, drivers champs at the end of the at the end of the year last year. So super quick on track, but again, as I said earlier, everyone so close. Yeah, yeah. The last time we were here was back in September for the end of the 2020 season. Uh, Brighton A have come into the pit lane for their black flag. It's pretty much ruined any chance they had of a, of a strong result in this one. Looking at this battle now, this is all over eighth place. Warwick A, in the number 19, with the attention to Trinity A just behind them. And there's Leicester A in the orange suit, John Woodhead. And they're currently driving out there for Warwick A in the number 19. Just to remind myself where they started. Uh, on this grid. In true Andrew Mather fashion, I can't actually find them on the <laughs> grid. Well, they start P4, so Matthew Hudson holding himself in a good position at the moment. Again, trying to convert a high grid slot into some strong points. So 17 minutes to go. There's the number 52 of Cardiff 8, Josh Ladd. Josh Ladd not very happy there, putting no. his hands up. As Lamb is going to look for it up the inside, not quite able to make it stick there through the double left-hander. All following in a queue still, but Lamb really pressuring uh, Mr. Ladd now going into the final corner of the circuit. He's going to look for it, the move he does, goes for it up the inside. He's going to push Josh wide, that's going to make Josh have a terrible, terrible exit. and might lose a few positions out here. Down the main straight, he's going to lose another one and another one. Loses up to not car number 11 on the outside of number 50 and he's just continuously going back that's what seems to happen as well you ask me the difference between inters and mains everyone's so close on pace that once you start going back you just keep going back it is so uh, so frustrating so i can feel josh's pain currently as he goes yeah. to the, all the way to the back of that group very Sam, frustrating oh two drivers off this is in the s's the 22 is one of them and the number 40 so where are they in the order well birmingham b were in 13 and swansea were in 15. yeah so they were very close together on circuit they've come together form down through the order. Manchester A are on the move. All of a sudden, Newcastle A and Ollie Underwood's uh, pace is completely gone here. There's a black flag for Surrey A. It's all going on in race control at the moment, but Newcastle A have now fallen behind uh, Manchester A for second place. We'll try and catch up with that in a moment. Still looking at this battle involving Matthew Hudson there in the number 19 Warwick A cards. He's just been overtaken by the 53 of UEB, trying to fight back into the hairpin. Josh goes for a move around the outside, can't make it stick, and now he's going to lose out to the drive behind him, number 48. That is Leicester A. It's having a great a, little battle. It's a heck of a drive by UEB. It's Jasper Chamberlain in the carts for them at the moment. Started at P32. Wow. So already 20 plus positions made up by Jasper Chamberlain. This is a fantastic drive from the driver there in the blue and white suit. A little bit of a discussion going on down uh, start finish between Josh Ladd and John Woodhead there between Cardiff and Leicester A. Maybe you're wondering, it's like, oh, it's, it's, it's pretty tasty, this main log. It wasn't like this in the Inters. Penalty for Leeds A. That's their second of the race so far. And again, it's for contact. There's also a penalty for Trent Beef and overtaken the yellow. Hudson trying to fight back here. Oh, and a black flag for Surrey A. Uh, although saying that, that might be a repeat showing. 
15 minutes of this one to go. Next to a comfortable out front at the moment. The lead of three seconds. And as you say, UWE B, some great pace already pulling away from that pack yeah. that he's just passed. Uh, Nicky Richardson is being overtaken. Diving to the grass. What a man. What a man. That's something you don't often see. But he is <laughs> he's just testing the cars. Keeping out of everybody's way, of course. Uh, contact warning for there. The number 32 of Luffle C. Grace does seem to be calming down. Now, there's your leader. X to A in the number three. Doing a really solid job at the moment is Jensen Brown. Got a famous nice name, down. of course, round here, Jensen. Very, very Button's famous. Corner. He's clearly uh, channeling that vibe today with that uh, three and a half it, second gap at the front. It is always a curious thing. As long as you, you, you go and read Jensen Button's book, he talks a lot about how he started here at Clay Pigeon. And having driven, it, driven both of us, it, it, it's blatantly obvious how his driving style became what it was. Very smooth, very precise through the corners. That's what you have to be around this circuit, given the high-speed natures of, of the other corners. You can't be flinging it around and getting the, the back end loose, say, like other, other driver styles. Very, very tricky circuit to master, this one. Another penalty for Leeds A. I suspect it's contact again. Yes, it is. Fastest lap of the race, Jasper Chamberlain, UWEB. You saw on the left-hand side of your screen the timing tower go purple uh, for a moment there, the ninth placed cart, and with 12 minutes and 45 seconds, he's got a bit of work to catch up to the next group with Trinity A and Swansea B, but he is absolutely flying at the moment, here's the battle uh, that we're looking at between the 20 and 13, this is all over second place, and that's a change actually, Benjamin Boris in the black suit of the white helmet for Birmingham A is up to third. Here we go. Really hot and up now. And good to see another battle for the top positions. Obviously, we like seeing the battles down for the 20th and 21st, but when it's for the front, it really, really feels like it matters. And these guys going side by side. 13 looking to defend into the double left-hander, keeping it ahead currently of the Newcastle A lad, but he is pressuring, looking now to go into the last corner. Going to try and set up a move, try and slingshot himself to maybe go for a move down into Billy's blind. We're going to have to wait a few seconds to see that. The man slightly ahead, Manchester A has now built a slight gap, but realistically around this track, as I say, everyone's so close, and there's a decent amount of slipstream too that uh, they could easily catch, up, catch back up with him very, very quickly. But battle hotting up, nice to see. It is indeed. Keep an eye on that gap as well, because uh, last time around, Exeter Ray lost a little bit of pace, 42.189 for them, as opposed to Manchester A, who did their fastest lap of the race so far, 40.906. The gap is down to 3.1. Uh, and if third and fourth place play this sensibly, John, you know, they work together and try and keep in that slipstream that we've been mentioning so far this morning. With this pace, Michael Grieve could pull them back towards the front and we could have a four-way scrap for the lead here. We really could. That would be certainly, certainly epic. But yeah, as you say, dropping down from a three and a half seconds to about 3.1, 3.2. Now, you would think usually with, with battling that people would lose a lot of time, but actually following one by one behind each other, getting that slipstream, as you say, allows for them to uh, gain some extra pace and possibly catch back up. But about t just over 10 minutes left to go now. So they've, they've certainly got some time to, uh, to close that gap down. We can only kind of hope and, hope and pray for some more battling as these three continue to follow super close through the second sector of the circuit into sector three, into that fast final right-hander. Barely a dab of breaks there as one of the gentlemen went wide there, but I didn't see who it was. It was number 13, Birmingham A, loses out to Newcastle, takes a place and up into the podium position currently. Good morning to uh, formerly of Swansea University. You know, that's, that's a dirty oh word. Oh, uh, Rich T Racing's James Johnston, who what has reminded me that Jasper Chamberlain, who's, who we've been singing the praises of, now in eighth place for UEB, is in a legend. Ah. We're not going to talk about him anymore because he doesn't <laughs> count. He's not actually out there. He's not actually doing anything in terms of points as there's a spin coming off the S's for the number 50. Just puts it on the grass as well. So he has to get out and push it back on. Otherwise, JB will hate him. Uh, the number 50 being Swansea B, so that's a spin out of the top 10. That's Howard's favourite spot of the circuit, Dan. He, he likes going out there. Uh, so that's a real shame for them. Love for A. Keep an eye out for Love for A, because there's 10 minutes of this race to go. They've just set the fastest lap of the race, a 40.64, up to P5. And they're doing, from my perspective, John, a similar thing to what they did at, at PFI. 
consistently putting the results in, getting on with their work quietly. I'm not seeing Loughborough A come up for warnings, penalties, this, that and the other. They're clearly getting the job done and looking pretty good this year. They're looking very good, very good, very quick and as you say, being fast but fair. Something that I've kind of need to learn from my black flag last time. But um, yeah, take a bit of uh, take a bit of something from, from Loughborough. Doing very, very well and as you say, quick pace, just setting the fastest lap. Two tenths faster than the previous fastest lap so really uh, putting the hammer down and going for it and Catching back up to this, uh, this fast battling pack. Nine minutes to go. Uh, Jensen Brown seems to have got on top of the extra A cart. He's now extended his lead back out to 4.4 seconds. We're uh, having a look here through the hairpins. You see the number 11 there of Trinity A flash D shot. Battle for second place. Birmingham trying to get past Manchester. Michael Grieve in the red suit and the red and black helmet on the inside coming through buttons into top bend now. But Benjamin Boris, we saw him earlier racing in illegibly for Birmingham C, having a real go here in race number three. And in fact, Newcastle A have hopped in front, apologies, yet yeah, number 24, Volley Underwood, has hopped back up to second place, but does have penalties, remember, so won't stay there. Great scrap this, and Charlie Bennett is on the scene as well, though, the number four, black suit at the back of this train. He's now having a look at the inside of Benjamin Boris. Sorry, John. Yeah, that is through and into fourth place. Fantastic. Still looking very quick. Immediately comes up to the back of them and immediately makes the move work. I'm going to try and uh, follow the number 20 cop, Manchester A, down the straight here. And as we say, with the slipstream, should be able to keep in this kind of pack of four. So a battle really, really hotting up now. That's P18 uh, to P4. In progress through the race so far. Just looking a little bit further down, Warwick A still holding there in ninth place. Matthew Hudson, just ahead of Cambridge B at the moment, P10. Good stuff here once again at Clay Pigeon for round three of the British University's Carlton Championship. Keep your comments coming in. Let us know uh, who you're supporting here today at Clay Pigeon. Unless, if it's not Cardiff A, then, then don't bother saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not biased. <laughs> never, never, never. Um, do make sure you like and share the stream let people know that we're racing here today and Got be sure to subscribe to uh, Alpha Live and Double Dash Motorsport Media yeah. of course as well penalty for Leicester A, we've got plenty more racing coming up uh, in the weeks to come, we'll be back at the next meeting in the BUKC at Shennington in a few weekends time that should be fantastic, I've not been to that track before you're going to love it, it's good not just because it's 10 minutes from my house <laughs> best morning drive ever. No bias on no this bias. at all. No. <laughs> uh, also tomorrow on the Alpha Live channels we've got something very new for, for both Alpha Live and Double Dash Motorsport Media, uh, the British Scooter Endurance Cup from Wilton Mill. Myself and Anthony Jordan will be commentating on that one as Benjamin Boris, Benjamin Boris making a bit of a mistake there, running wide. Yeah, yes, it was the number 13. You're losing some positions. Uh, the number 44 getting involved there. This is the trouble, isn't it, John? Sometimes is it's when you get to this stage of the race and you've got fast drivers down the inside. There goes Charlie Bennett. That's third place for Loughborough A. For this stage of the race, John, where you've got your fast drivers coming through back markers, back markers maybe not quite aware that those are the leaders. It all gets a bit messy in the middle. Yeah, it seems to be a little bit better than in Inters. In Inters, yeah. the back markers really uh, can be interesting sometimes. Seems to be a bit better here, but yeah, especially for uh, for me, my first time picking out the numbers, it is being a, a little bit difficult with some back markers being in there. But again, that's kind of another element of the racing, another thing yeah. that you need to get good at, being able to pass these back markers in the correct place to keep your position and keep your times as slow as possible. Charlie Bennett is doing a great job of it. So as as it stands with the penalties coming into play, Loughborough A are now sat in a net second place. Uh, if you're just joining us, Newcastle A have already picked up a place deductions penalty that will be applied at the end of the race for uh, exceeding track limits too many times. You get a few warnings, keep doing it, you get a penalty. There's the number 41, which is a lap down, uh, being overtaken. Oh, it's James Brickles. A bit sad not to see Huddersfield here. Yeah, Huddersfield, unfortunately, not able to race at the moment. Do miss the guys from H Carts. Hope to see them back very, very soon. 
yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can get a full grid going again. It was great. It's great to see some teams back, although, as you said earlier, it does pain me to say, but it's great to see teams like Swansea back. Yep. As many teams possible on the grid, as many Carters out there having fun is always positive. Four and a half minutes to go. Contact one from the 41 of Imperials. That's the car that was being lapped uh, a few moments ago. The, the, there's the leader. Gap hanging around 3.6 seconds at the moment. So it does look like Jensen Brown's got this one under control, John. He's uh, piloting a very good race. He's been doing a fantastic job, completely keeping his head. Although we said earlier that it looked like the timing was going down slightly, it's now, as you say, gone back to almost three and a half seconds. So I don't know if there's an opposite to commentator's curse, but it seems we've been able to, uh, to do that. Howard's just advised me. I have wondered about this before. Um, Birmingham may have made a bit of an admin error because, as I say, Benjamin Boris has already raced today, uh, so is now ineligible for this race, for the Birmingham A race, not the Birmingham C race that he did earlier on. Why have they done that? Which is a bit of an error. Oh dear. Yeah, they've uh, not planned that out very well. Nope. So that is their drop score used for this round, Birmingham A. Uh, but they are missing some drivers today. There's no Rory Smith, as Sam Rowling mentioned earlier on. There is your leader, Jensen Brown. And next to A, one of those teams that have, have been a real model for a team wanting to improve through recent years. You know, no offence to previous Exeter teams. They used to not be a factor in this championship. Finished third last year after several uh, years of moving up. And, and here, even though they've missed PFI, I, I think they're still going to be a bit of a factor this season. Certainly, yeah, they certainly will, as I believe we've just seen a move for the second place. Loughborough A, car number four, goes past Newcastle A. As we say, they've been super, super quick, moving up through the field and now in, into P2, doing a fantastic job there. And uh, it did seem like the, the gap to the leader, the to A man, had dropped to about three seconds, but then those two have been battling behind, and now it's up to almost four seconds. So I think, yeah, he, with two minutes to go, seems like he has that in the bag. Again, try not to give any sort of commentator's curse to him. Um, but yeah, looking fantastic out front is the ex Damon. It's all right, it's your first time. You have to hone it over years before it becomes torpedo like. Move up the inside there from, uh, that was Leicester A, making a move on the number 10. Was that for position? Uh, yes, it was. It was for P22. So Leicester A passed their East Midlands rivals, Nottingham Trent A there. And there are Loughborough A, looking pretty good at this stage of the season. Not to say that they're guaranteed to dominate this championship. We've seen this in many years gone by. Teams have an absolute flyer out the blocks, but then as the season rolls on, they get reeled back in. Still a lot of racing to go in the BUKC. We're not even at the halfway stage of the season so far. Running a little bit later in the year, of course. Normally this series runs from February to April, starting in April this year. One minute and 15 to go. I mean, as you say, starting a little bit later does mean that we'll more likely get more dry races, but you never know, it is the UK. We could still get some, uh, some random wet ones, but that's definitely better for the, uh, for the lighter guys. I, myself, a yep. little bit of a heavier chap, so I do, enjoy a, I do enjoy a wet race from time to time, but equally, it can, it can extend the grid a lot more. People can be a lot more different in time, so in the dry, it is nice to see all the drivers being super close together and creating fantastic battles for us to watch on stream little bit of contact there between 13 and 46 the 46 uh, was being lapped that was Warwick C two more laps of this one to go 30 seconds there or thereabouts on the clock X to A will see the last lap board next time around which will be in a few seconds time we're just having a, a look here again at fourth place Charlie Bennett uh, and I think, if I'm right in saying, they've got Tom Thickpenny to come. I've not seen Tom out so far today. There is your leader, Jensen Brown. Looking to take a race victory here. Another driver. This is what's impressed me, John, with, with Exeter over the past few years. It's not just about having a good A team. It's having that, that flow of drivers. Jensen Brown, who's raced in the B team in previous uh, editions of the BUKC, is now there in the A team. And clearly there on merits, it's going to be a fantastic race victory for him. Clearly so. He's doing a fantastic job. As you say, 
Moving up through the B team to the A team, nurturing that talent at Exeter, and they've just been getting better and better and better as the number three cart of Exeter A comes round the final corner and is going to take the win in race number three of today. A fantastic job from him with Loughborough coming home in second. Close that down to about three, so close the gap down even to about three seconds at the end there. So still loads of pace from Loughborough, but did fantastically being followed by Newcastle in the top three. Very good stuff indeed. Exeter A get another victory here in the BUKC. Look for A strong again. And that really does put a marker down for their championship rivals here at Clay Pigeon today. Newcastle A, uh, even with the penalties, that's still a strong result for them up in the top ten. Manchester A, another good result for Manchester A, following up their second earlier on with Ocean Beach. Michael Grieve will be very, very happy with that one. Birmingham A, real error from them, uh, ending up in the legible in that race. Trinity B uh, in sixth place, UEB in a legible in that race in seventh, Trinity A in seventh, Warwick A and Cambridge B wrapping out the top ten, Leeds B, Cambridge A, Nottingham A, Cardiff A, uh, Swansea B all in the top half, uh, X to B, Brighton A, Swansea A and Trent B were all the drivers on the lead laps. That shows the pace that Jensen Brown had there, that he was able to uh, get to 20th place and put them a lap down. That's something that you don't always see now in the BUKC since the, since we brought the uh, the license system into play. So drivers will come back to start finish, hop out the carts, and we'll get ready for race number four. John, how did you find that Your first time in the box here? Fantastic. The it was brilliant, mate. I love watching it at the sideline. I'm going to watch it by myself. I'm usually just shouting at myself anyway, so why not stick a microphone on me and uh, put me on the stream? <laughs> exactly, but uh, I've had a great time. Thank you for having me, and I look forward to being back again for race three of the next round this afternoon. You're in race number five, aren't you? I'm in race number five of the morning session of yep. this stream, yes, so watch out for me. However, I'm starting in P30, so I'm not really expecting to be on the stream at all, unless maybe I straight line the chicane. Just that could be a move for me. Just send it, you know, <laughs> cut off Billy's, just cut across the grass. We've seen it been done before. And, uh, yeah, P5, mate, by... Uh, Turn two. Keep your comments in. Uh, to Rob Sutherland, this is the first time it's been dry at Clay since 1964. I agree. Uh, I'm just looking out for Jacob. Looks like he is ready down on the grid. He's giving us a wave. Jacob Harris, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Andrew. Down here on the grid, I am waiting for Lights to Flag Winner Jensen to come past. He's by there. He hasn't seen that I'm lurking, waiting for him. Okay, he's been told he needs to weigh, so uh, he'll jump to the front of the queue and make sure he is of the minimum weight and verify that race win. Uh, they don't even have the scales ready. Ah, oh, the scales are down there whilst the people behind him get weighed. So just the top three will be weighed for that one, I believe, not the whole field. As they file out now, the carts will be refueled, ready for the remaining two races of the morning. Second straight win for Exeter, puts them in a very strong position for the round win this morning, having not shown up to PFI. It's exactly what they needed to get themselves a high finish in this year's championship. Jensen now making his way back out onto the grid. See me? Jensen, congratulations. Lights the flag. Yeah, it was the uh, longest 25 minutes of my life, I think. But, uh, yeah, it got a bit hairy at a few points with the back markers, but... All good. Did you ever worry? Did you ever have a look over your shoulder and think, oh, God, who's that coming? Uh, at a few points, I didn't really know where everyone was among all the Okay, drivers for uh, heat four, is it? I just uh, make kept your way pushing, in, guys. Make kept your consistent. Way in. And, uh, yeah, seems to work out. And that's the second straight win now for Exeter uh, with, obviously, your teammate winning before you. Have you got the skill and the talent in the A-team to bring it home the round victory? Uh, yeah, we're, we're just, uh, we missed the first two rounds, so we're just aiming to be really good from now, really consistent, and uh, we're going to, don't count us out yet. Who's there next for you guys? Uh, I think it's Ryan. He's got a fair bit of BUKC experience, he can sort you out, can't he? Yeah, we should be all good. All right, well, nice one, thanks for talking to us, and congratulations on your race win. Cheers. Jensen Brown there, winner of race number three. Now we have drivers for race number four heading to their carts. And I'm going to drive, dive, I should say, I'm not going to drive anywhere, dive straight into the middle of the pack, around about where they're putting this fuel on. And we're going to talk for the first time today to someone from Loughborough, because they are our championship leaders, having won both rounds at PFI. You know, it's a display. I don't quite know how far back we're going, 
why Piers was fiddling with the pins on that cart, I don't know, but he's a down sight further back than he thought he was at least. And I'll just let him uh, arrange the number plate and transponder. Fair bit of lead going on for this one. Uh, he's realised I'm just stood here talking behind him. Piers, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm oh, not too bad, thank you. Uh, I haven't spoken to anyone from Loughborough today. I was just saying, you are championship leaders after all. We are. We did a pretty good first round, actually, I think. Yeah, it, was, it went um, not surprisingly well, but it was, uh, yeah, a nice start to the season, definitely. And, of course, you guys won two years ago prior to the uh, two years of Coventry dominance, shall we call it. Coventry not here today. Brooks are your old rivals, and uh, Exeter seem to be doing as well as well. How's it looking for Loughborough? It's looking okay. Uh, we had a tricky one in the first one. James uh, struggled a bit. I think he had a bit struggled with his cart a bit. Charlie did a very good one in that one. He's never been here before. Had three laps practice. Managed to go from 20 something to second. So yeah, pretty good one in that one. Um, yeah, well, good really. Good to be back for the BUKC properly again. Excellent. Good I'm just to gonna see. I'm just gonna get out the way because the fuel's coming. Do you want to grab your lead because they'll need that little space by there. Um, where are you starting in this race? 20th, I think. Not ideal, but what can you do from there? Hopefully go forwards. Not too many cars, is there? Yeah, that's all right. It should be about 19 in front of you. Approximately, yeah. yeah. Have Approxim you uh, seen anyone you uh, don't like the look of in this race? That bloke in the red, I don't like the look of him. No, he's dodgy. And he's Sam Gerrard for Cambridge. Cambridge are doing well this year. Um, oh, yeah, they are. We've got uh, Chris Miles, I think, for Warwick on pole position, and uh, that's not Piers Paffenham Walsh, I can say that for sure, because he's not here today, but uh, one of the Brooks team just ahead of you. Oh, yeah, 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 drivers. Yeah, yeah. They're all drivers C there. Certainly, certainly are some drivers. Well, I'm going to go have a quick chat with them and uh, see what they reckon Hello. to you coming through from the back. Hi, Mum. Hello, Piers' Mum. And uh, that is Piers Pryor from Loughborough. Let's have a look further down, and as we said, find out who is in Piers Packham Walsh's suit. Because I know it's not Piers himself. A quick tap on the back. Who's this? Lewis. Lewis, what are you doing in a suit that's quite not obviously not yours? Put a lot of weight on since I come to uni. I need to borrow a suit. Oh, I see. And you say no. You say you've put on a lot of weight, and you're now as fat as Piers Packham Walsh. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Where is he? Work. Work? Because you not booked the day off. Nah. It's a lovely sunny day with great kart racing down in Clay Pigeon. What could possibly make someone go to work on a day like today? A bit of money. You don't need money, you need happiness in life. <laughs> Lewis, uh, what do you reckon for yourself in this race? P5 or above would be nice. I was going to say that was a very definite answer until he said or above. <laughs> Strong ambitions. Uh, have you had a look around the field, see anyone you uh, don't like the look of? Yeah. Gini. Right, so let's go have a ch quick chat with him, Lewis. Thanks for talking to us. Tom Gini in the Brooks A cart, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I believe he's second in the championship after PFI. Yeah, decent two rounds, pretty average, average both ways. Got two podiums in each, so okay, he was second, but it's all, all to play for still. So. Can you get yourselves on the top step today? Uh, hopefully, got a bit of making up to do now after this morning, but we'll, we'll get there. And Tom, are, are Egypt right to sue the owners of the Ever Given for blocking their canal, or should the owners of the Ever Given be suing Egypt for having a tra trade route that's not fit for purpose? I don't know, but the beavers need to come into this. I mean, they got a great dam out of it, so that's all I can say. Vote, vote for them, mate. Vote for beavers. A strong message there from Mr. Guinea and Oxford Brooks Cart. Thanks for talking to us. Let's wander further down the grid. We've got Dante Dillon in the Nottingham Trent car. I'm going to have a quick chat with him. Dante, how you doing? I'm not too bad. How are you? I'm not too bad. Uh, good start for Nottingham Trent today with uh, your man Sam Pooley winning. How can you do in this one? Uh, well, obviously it would be great to replicate his result. Uh, but as always, always tough races, uh, a lot of tough competition. So we just try our best really, see what we can do. Are you having a nice day so far? I'm having a great day so far. It's al it always is a lot of effort to organise these things with the team. So it's always great to see them having fun. That's what, it, that's what it's about. Uh, I don't really clock anything to do with my races until I actually come to my race. I'm always thinking about everyone else, so it's good to see everyone have fun. It's a great day, so why not be happy? You could say that the real trophies are the friends you make along the way. Say that again. I said you could say the real trophies are the friends you make along the way. Oh, exactly. That's, 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 all, that's what BUKC is all about. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dante. Enjoy your race. Let's uh, have a quick chat to Mr. Miles on pole position, because I have not yet. I've, I have spoken to A. White, but I haven't spoken to this young man here. Mr. Miles, how are you? Not bad, thanks. What are you 
doing with yourself on pole position there? Worrying, pretty much. Oh, yeah. what's, the, what's the plan? What are we going to do? Uh, try not to get binned. And uh, do you reckon you're quick enough to uh, take this to the flag? No. At least, you, at least you're honest with yourself. Have, uh, have you had a look over your shoulder, seen who's behind you? I mean, there's definitely a lot of good drivers behind, so... <laughs> you just do your best, all right? Cheers. Okay, that's, uh, this man behind is uh, having a lot of giggle. It's Mr. Hyde. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Remind me what university you go to? UEA. It's our first year. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Connolly had a decent result, but for penalties earlier on, didn't he? Yeah, I know, yeah. It was a bit unfortunate, but hopefully I can bring home the win today. Of course, you're one of our clubman's teams. Uh, how are you looking in terms of the clubman's championship? Um, I think we're near the top, but we had a bit pretty shocking first round, so I think round two was a lot better than the first. So What happened in the first round? Was it your fault? Penalties. Well, it was, it was our first time driving the carts as well, so we were just getting used to the championship, really. Best thing to do is not break the rules. Yeah, probably best, isn't it? Right, we're getting going. Good luck for your race. Have a good one. That is the grid four, race number four. Penultimate race of this round. Exeter looking strong, but let's see how some of our other contenders get on in this one. Andrew Howard, back to you guys in the comms box. Thanks, Jacob. Let's take a look at the grid then for race number four, the penultimate race of this round. Bear in mind, we have got two rounds to give you, though. Plenty of action still to come here at Clay Pigeon. Warwick C have Chris Miles starting for them on pole position with Brooks Dees, Adam Jones alongside. University of East Anglia A have Luke Ide uh, for them and Trinity St. David B have Ainsley Martin on row two. Row three is Nottingham A's Ben Brewster and Sam Gerrard for Cambridge A. Nottingham Trent A and Brighton A make up the uh, fourth row of the grid with Dante Dillon and Martin Machak, respectively. Benjamin Watkin for Loughborough B and Tom Davies for University of West England B round out your top ten. X to B have Alexander Rooney and Brighton B have Ben Chesters going from row number six. Row seven is Loughborough C's Chris Hancocks with Lewis Bracewell for Oxford Brooks B. Then it's Tom Geeney for the Brooks A cart and James Walkington for Manchester A on row number eight. Row nine is George Palozzi for Southampton A and Birmingham B's Nicole Sharples. Riley Phillips starts for Brooks C with Lupra A's Piers Pryor rounding out your top 20. Then on row 11, it's Nottingham Trent C with Simon Stoneham at the wheel and Surrey A's Will Hemsley. Row 12 is Leicester A's Cameron Dickens and Alexander Doricott for Imperial A. Row 13 is going to be Leeds B's Kieran Harrison and then it's Paul Francis for Warwick B. Row 14 is University of Wales Trinity St. David A's Callum Evans and Nottingham Trent B's Oliver Yule. Uh, Birmingham C have Sam Rowland not eligible for points uh, and Warwick A's Archie Hobson. That rounds out your top 30. Row 16 is going to be Birmingham A's Ethan Herford and James Harrington for Bournemouth A. And then rounding out your 33 cart grid University of West of England A have Ed Bars, who I also want to say is ineligible for points in this race. He's way too old. Um, hello on the chat to T3RA, or Terror, shall we say. Let's go Piers Gang. Piers Pryor's out there, I believe. Yep, there he is. Are we going to challenge the comment we had that said it's never been dry at Clavish? Since 1964. I did a Royal Navy Karting Championship round here as a guest appearance several years ago and it was the hottest day I've ever had in a go-kart. You lie. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> it's horrendously hot here. No. But yes. No. Weather pretty good here. Perfect racing conditions at Clay Pigeon. Getting ready for race number four. This will be the last race for some teams in this round. We're going to go around again. Jimbo's pointing them through the crowd. So we'll see. be having some spreadsheet of doom action in... Uh, in due course. I should say guest appearance didn't mean I came with any karting prowess whatsoever. I think guest appearance of the village idiot may have been <laughs> what I was there to do. Making up the but, numbers. Um, yes. But, uh, and I keep your comments coming in. Hello, I missed this one during the race. Uh, Dawn Bissett says, come on, Charlie Bennett, watching you from uh, Deal in Kent. Love, Mom. 
Hello, Mrs. Bissett. Uh, but now, keep your comments coming in. Really does help us out. Makes the algorithms go wee. It does. I don't know how because I don't understand YouTube, but there you go. Pace cart driver is ready to get this one underway. They will pull off to driver's right. Eyes on the lights for the start of race four here at Clay Pigeon for BUKC 2021. Very even start off the front row of the grid. Down into Billy's blind they go for the first time in this one. So far looking pretty clean at the front and at the back. John Ratcliffe has not taken my advice and not cut across the grass on turn one. Pretty clean start that, Howard. Yeah, AZ Martin for Trinity St. David B felt the need to cut across the grass at the S's in avoidance, but to be honest with you, I think that was a good call. Very impressed with that start, mate. That was extremely clean throughout the field, and it's Luke Ede for our debutants. East Anglia A, who has got himself to the head of the field on this one, mate. Our new team for the BUKC leads the race as they come around to finish lap one as they all stream through top end for the first time there they are university of east anglia a in that 54 cart then it is the number five of cambridge a and the 26 of oxford brooks d and already cambridge is applying the pressure and that is a lovely move for the lead into the s's by sam gerrard in that cambridge a cart so cambridge get to the uh, lead of the race but impressive stuff here from as i say david Tots in the series university of east anglia that is Brooks D with Adam Jones at the wheel in third place. And then leading that uh, pack from fourth place down is the number 46 of Warwick C. Chris Miles, our pole sitter, still uh, doing well off the back of that first couple of laps. Here we go, streaming through top bend again. You can already see, I can see Piers Pryor has been on the move already, Andrew. I could see the Luffere car in the midst of uh, the pack there. Uh, a couple of drivers off in the hairpin on that last lap. The number 10 was one of them. The number 30 of Nottingham Trent B was involved as well. Uh, so yes, that's not good news for either of those two cards. Apologies, I don't think it was number 10. I need my eyes testing again. It's number 40 of Birmingham B. Nice little move there from Manchester 8 through Billy's blind there. They went side by side with that. We had the upper hand coming into the S's. Streaming here into the hands hairpin. Difficult braking point. We haven't really mentioned it, but there's not too many visual cues for no. that braking point. Uh, that's why earlier on I was talking about how easy it is to outbrake oneself into there. It really can be. This little battle then coming through the top crown of the circuit is over eighth place, I believe. Brooks B uh, versus Nottingham A and Loughborough A. Here they are. That's Piers Pryor in the pink helmet there going down the inside. Trying to get himself doubly down the doubly inside. Down wow. inside. And uh, past Nottingham A and Brooks B there goes the Loughborough A cart. As through the hands hairpin they go. And uh, yeah, we cut back to uh, there was uh, Warwick C running in fifth place as well. Through the top of the circuit comes this battle. Cambridge A, your leaders, ahead of the University of East Anglia A, who are still keeping them within a second. Brooks D in second, in third, excuse me. Trent A fourth, Warwick C fifth. And that is the train we're looking at. 46 of Warwick C leads this pack at the moment with University of Wales Trinity St. David B in sixth. And that was Luffer A just going down the inside of University of West of England B as well. So change for seventh place as there's a yellow flag out at the horseshoe, was it? I'm just trying to... And there's Chris Miles under pressure here in that Warwick C cart from Ainsley in the... Uh, Ainsley Martin it is in that University of Wales Trinity St. David but uh, he's got by, and Piers Pryor follows through as well. So that means it's now Trinity St. David B and Loughborough ahead of Warwick C on that lap. Plenty of change in the early stages here in the top 10 as Piers Pryor looks down the inside of Ainsley Martin in that University of Wales Trinity St. David B cart, and following him through as well is the Brooks A cut with Tom Geeney at the wheel. So good effort there, good start from Tom Geeney. We're seeing these two experienced teams of Loughborough A and Brooks A working their way up through, and goodness, uh, surely Brooks need it because they haven't had the best day at the races so far. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, a very important one there. It looks to me like Ed Barr's working his way up through the field as well. That's unsurprising to see him doing that in the Whoa. University of West of England. Sorry, a huge, massive save. Oh, one yeah. of the saves of the year so far. Uh, I think it was the, it was the 27. It, it was. was the 27 who went wildly off circuit. I thought it was going to have a date with the uh, tyre wall there. That makes it Martin Matchak in the Brighton A cart, mate. Yeah, and uh, kept him kept himself running in the race. That was a really, really good save by Martin. We need to keep one eye on our leaders here, mate, because 
the fastest lap of the race has just been set by Ide in that University of East Anglia cart. Uh, they're just coming around top end now to complete this lap. We're currently looking at some of the brilliant battles in the mid pack. Here are your leaders, though. There they are, the breakaway two at the front there. Sam Gerrard in that number five Cambridge A cart. And the University of East Anglia cart with Luke Ide at the wheel. Very interesting season so far for Cambridge. Uh, in the early stages of round one, they were looking pretty good on for a round win. And I wouldn't be surprised at all at, at some stage this season if we see a round win for Cambridge A. It could be today, of course. They are looking stronger than uh, I've seen them for a good few years. It's good to see from Cambridge. We've already seen Sam Cobber to have a strong result for them. Bump and pass penalty awarded. Well, awarded, that's the wrong term. Given out to Sorier there. Will Hamsley picking up that penalty. Unfortunately, that's going to be four positions docked come the end of this race. And I think he's one of those carts that's really in uh, quite a train at the moment. So um, could be uh, battling all the way through and maybe lose more positions could be quite costly there it's not it's not as costly in the sense that it's not a time penalty it's a positions penalty but if you're in a train of cuts and you get pushed wide at some point suddenly that penalty can be all the more painful if you're at the back of a train of carts at the moment though our two leaders seem fairly happy to uh, work together it's Nottingham Trent A's uh, effort in third place at the moment which is uh, Dante Dillon at the wheel and he's uh, got Loughborough A for company. In fact, Piers Pryor, yeah, has just caught up with him in the battle over third place, which is just coming out of the S's now. You might see it coming to the back of your shot. So there are your leaders. And then we've got um, a cart being tested in between them, which is just pulled to the side of the road there. So there are your leaders. And then the battle over third place is starting to come together some four seconds behind these two. So there they are. And then there's Dante Dillon being chased by Piers Pryor over fourth place. And uh, Brooks D and Brooks A are coming along for the ride as well. In fact, that is the Brooks D card of Adam Jones has got back past Brooks A, I think, because I thought Brooks A had got by them. Mm. New fastest lap of the race from the University of West of England A, which is Ed Bars in that cut. We're, we're unsurprised to see Ed Bars setting uh, fast pace in Club 100 machinery, aren't we? I think that's the fastest lap of the day so far. Yes. Uh, I mean, for those uninitiated, Ed Bars is one of our fastest drivers in the Club 100 sport, uh, Sprint Series. Uh, was one of our DDMM drivers of the year a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. where it seemed to be every, everything we saw him in, not just Club 100 machinery, he was very, very quick and very competitive. And uh, if you do want to see some Club 100 sprints racing, you can do. Six of the rounds later in the season will be streamed here on the Alpha Live network with commentary from Dullard Ash Sport Media. And here's two other drivers who uh, you and I have had the pleasure of commentating on for a good few years, mate. Yep. Dante Dillon in third at the moment for Nottingham Trente and Piers Pryor for Loughborough A. Is Pryor going to try down the inside of Hans Heppin? He certainly is. And textbook, brilliantly judged on the braking makes it look quite easy frankly but as i said earlier it is you know obviously you get muscle memory you get familiar with it but it's not a corner with obvious breaking points yeah um i think i remember the only reference i could ever work out is there's a post off to driver's left but of course you're eyeing the right because that's where you're trying to spot your apex so not easy there's brooks a uh, looking for a bit of help looking for any, going yes to the yes um Indeed. Bars to the inside. This is illegible, of course, but it's great fun to see one of the best Club 100 drivers in the country giving some of the students a lesson. <laughs> yeah. Tom and hey, fair play to Tom Geeney. There's a, not too many drivers that he there's gave a, the gesture a to work together. In that number two, I was going to yeah. say, yeah, he's he's probably going. Yeah, let's work together. Hang on, hang on who's this? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but. Um, in this particular instance, he'll do well to just hang on to the back of Ed Bars and see if they can't catch up to the pack ahead. You can see some good battles going on further down. Still less than half a second, the gap between our leaders, Sam Gerrard, in that number five came Cup. They are now coming onto some traffic at the back, Andrew, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. There's a black flag for University of Wales, Trinity St. David A, and that is for an ABC takeout, so they have... Uh, that's not going to the circuit cafe and taking take out your food. That's taking another driver out and causing them to go stationary at the side of the road. There's yellow at the S's as some tyres get replaced as well, Andrew. So look out for possible cone penalties there because someone has given those tyres a bit of a whack. 
Uh, who's this going through the top crowd? This is a brilliant battle being had round about the lower part of the top 10, I think it was. It's the number 14 of Loughborough B. Uh, and University of West of England B, Leeds B, Nottingham A. And Leeds B, don't forget, in that number 34, coming into today, they're side by side with University of West of England B. Coming into today as our leaders within the club and early days in the championship yet, yeah, Andrew, but they'll be wanting to have a strong day there as there's a late decision of Leeds B to cover the inside there. You can feel Nottingham A suddenly going, oop. Oh, sorry, UEB going, we better go to the inside there. There's Nottingham A now, trying down the inside of the West of England cart. And Brooks B is right there with them as well, and they're going to both get by. So it's now Nottingham A and Brooks B ahead of University of West of England B. In fact, West of England B, it's a bad lap for them, down three spots. But it's, it's so often the way, in, you know, pack racing like this in karting, if you get your rhythm upset, you're not going to be down one position, you're going to be down seven. Yep, Southampton A have had uh, a curb warning. They're currently 17th place. Birmingham A, um, sad to say, obviously it's a team, uh, really shot themselves in the foot here in this third round. They're currently down in 30th place. So all that strong work from earlier in the day is going to go to waste now that they've made that clerical er error and then put up with an ineligible score that they weren't intending on. Read the rules, folks. Yeah, we were discussing it off-air just a moment ago, but... Um I think it is a rule that's changed over the years. Yep. I don't remember that when we were um, of that Birmingham parish. Uh, you used to have to declare this is the race that the driver is eligible in. Um, and there was a rule uh, back in the very early days of what was then known as the Rookies Championship. There, there was a loophole that you could be eligible in both championships. But that got changed, uh, I want to say, in 20. 2014. So 2014, and then you had to declare which race day of the meeting. Yep. The two-day session of BUKC is known as a race meeting in the regulations. But yeah, it's, it's it's the old lesson, isn't it? Know your rules, read your rules, then read them again, and uh, it pays to do that. Penalty for X to B for excessively uh, breaching track limits on a sausage curb. It actually specifically says for those of you looking at live timing, it says penalty sausage. That is uh, for hitting the kerb out of this corner that you can see now. The sausage kerb on drivers, right? These drivers avoid it well. If you ride up too much on that, you're going to risk damage to the cart. We are looking, by the way, at the battle of 15th place. Uh, it's Chris Miles, our former pole sitter in this one. And uh, that's a pass behind him as well. I think that's uh, Imperial A getting past Manos. Manchester getting back past Imperial, who sweep back past them in top bend. Nice little move there from the Imperial car. Here they are, side by side, Manchester versus Imperial. Swooping through there and down into Billy's Blind. It is still Imperial A with the advantage there. So good little battle going on there uh, between these two cards. Alexander Doricott out there for Imperial and Manchester. That's you with who they are. They have James Walkington out there for them with that. So good little battle there. Uh, and thank you for mentioning James because we have had a comment come in and I'm going to give a readout to you. Adam McConville watching from Australia supporting James Walkington for Manchester A. So an international audience here today for racing at Clay Pigeon. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for your support. Keep your comments coming in on the YouTube stream. They're beaming up to us here in the box. 11 and a half minutes of this one to go. Great battle this between Trent C uh, in the 44 and Loughborough C who have just got by them for 22nd place. It just goes to show how good the battling is throughout the field here. You know, these drivers are pushing right at the limit here. And I think it does really speak to the standard that we get in the BUKC. Don't get me wrong, both Andrew and I made our some karting debuts in BUKC Championship. There's a place for everybody here, yeah. but this licensing system, as, you, as we've talked about, mate, that really does... Uh, improve the standard of the series which let's not forget go, goes into this season as a, a motorsport uk endorsed series now yep all drivers have kx licenses the same as uh, all club 100 uh, national championship drivers last season i'm gonna spoil it though because the 44 is illegible okay <laughs> Good this battle. Is your, this is your first time watching a BUC, UKC <laughs> stream as the man who puts all the numbers into the spreadsheets. I don't like it, illegible drivers. Hey, at least the... Uh, they make life hard. At least the old finals days of a Birmingham E team aren't here anymore. <laughs> Ten minutes to go. <laughs> There's some, uh, some testers. 
Mr. Taylor and Mr. Richardson. Here's a battle. For and that's the a change. Race lead. That's yes. a change for second place because, oh gosh, Yui has got past Yui. University of West of England A is now ahead. You can see Ed Bars there in the green and black suit. Now, if he goes by Sam Gerrard, doesn't matter. Yep. Not eligible for points. Uh, if Sam Gerrard knows that is the thing, he's probably going to think, who's this car trying to pass me? I'm the leader and I don't want to be. Into top end goes Ed Bars. Shoots down the inside. Now, if you're if you're Sam Gerrard in that Cambridge car, what you should do is just sit on the bumper of Ed Bars. Bars is going to have good paces. There's a black flag for Warwick A, uh, which is for another ABC takeout. So somebody out there has been off. Can't see any stationary carts or yellow. Oh, yes, someone's off at the S's. I can see out the window. So that'll be what it's for. There it is, the recovering cart. Who is that? It's number 41. Um, Okay, that will... Imperial A. Yeah, oh, and that's gutting for them. Yeah, and they were together. They were 18th on the road. Look at JV. Look at the service that he provides. There he folks. goes. He's helping the young driver get his carts back on the road. Here are your leaders. Ed Bar's in that 25 cart. You can uh, admire his skill, but for the most part, ignore. I've got, so. I've got a way we're going to do this, Howard. We're okay. Gonna, we're going to still call them Yui, but it's going to be Yui Bristol and Yui Norwich. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've done terribly at doing the convention I set up literally two races ago. <laughs> they're Yui Bristol when it comes to former students, anyway. Yeah. So, so that, that's fine. I mean, to be fair, it's Yui East and Yui West as well. Literally, they've got cardinal compass directions <laughs> in their name, and yet they sound the same. Anyway, that there is your lead battle, which has stayed close throughout, let's not lie. And what's coming in to a fact here, you can just see, just flash through your screen. Piers Pryor for Love Parade coming into this one early. There he is, the pink helmet with the blue race suit combination. He's coming onto the back of this as well. And look at the traffic as well. They're currently having to uh, put a lap on the 49 cart of Surrey A and the 48 cart of Leicester A, who are on various different laps themselves. There's a penalty for Nottingham A as well, which is overtaking on the yellows, which I'm going to guess is swooping down the inside of the S's whilst that Imperial A cart was being recovered. But there's Sam Jarrow down the, down the inside. And straight through goes Luke Day as well. This is your lead battle right here with plenty of time left on the clock. And there is, is uh, I thought that uh, East Anglia had a way through then in top bend, but didn't have an opportunity there. Down into Billy's blind. Short, sharp braking zone. Considering how long a straight it is and how fast you're going, it's always impressive how short a braking zone it is before you can swing the cart into that. And then it's nice, a nice swooping motion all the way around to the S's. Now onto the Sturmy straight, through the hands hairpin, through the horseshoe. Make sure you get it slowed down for the first part and then just run it through the second, then through this right-hander at button. And then, as I say, it feels like the cart has to be on rail, on train tracks, although we do see overtakes, to be fair, into this top bend. It's a difficult one to do because you don't want to compromise, compromise yourself too much down this straight. Just over seven minutes left on the car, on the clock, excuse me. And Piers Pryor has, and there's been a change there because East Anglia have got past the Cambridge cart. So that is a change for the lead of the race there with Luca Ide at the front of the field for East Anglia A. As I say, West of England car at the front, Ed Bars, very impressive, has run all the way from the back of the grid, but is not eligible for points here, putting in a guest appearance from one of the best Club 100 cars. Those that are eligible and that we care about for points are right here. The 54 of East Anglia A, the number five of Cambridge A, who has just lost that net lead. And the trouble for Samuel Gerrard in that Cambridge A car is he can't just focus on trying to get past East Anglia. He's got to worry about Loughborough A on his tail as well. Nottingham Trent A aren't that far back either as well. So look out for the number 10 catching onto the back there. But there's Piers Pryor putting in the move on Cambridge A. So Loughborough A up to third on the road, but a net second once all has been counted at the end. Through top end they go. There was the number 10. You can just see uh, the number 10 of Trent A with Dante Dillon at the wheel. Yellow flag down at turn uh, Billy's, mate. Someone these up. Oh, oh, yeah, there, there is. Cart backwards in the wall. You can just see. You've just got a flash of orange. That was the marshal attending to the cart. Driver seems to be fine. Is just looking for an opportunity to rejoin, I think. Five and a half minutes left on the clock. Through Hans Hairpin once again. And now Piers Pryor 
is on the tail of Luke Ida in that East Anglia cart. Can Piers Pryor, or will Piers Pryor, ruin this debut win for the University of East Anglia? Past the 41 they go. That's the recovering Imperial A cart after their uh, whatever drama befell them in the S's that involved Warwick A, like Warwick A black flag. Junior gets out of the way, allows the leaders through. Just broken away from Sam Jarrod a little bit. Down the inside goes Piers Pryor for the lead of the race. But East Anglia and Ide is going to fight back, but he'll be on the outside of the... No, he has got back past. Brilliant drive off of the hairpin there for Luke Ide in that East Anglia cart. Through button they go. Piers Pryor choosing to hold station through top bend. He's going to try and have a run on the 54 of East Anglia as they come onto another lap. But there's the yellow flag out there because the cart is still out. The tyre barrier is still being tended to there. Penalty for Leicester A. That's for spinning under the yellows. Ah, that might be why there's still yellows down at Billy's Blind. But now down the inside goes Piers Pryor. And Sam Gerrard, I think, is going to be there to block the counter-attack because Gerrard's trying to get second place for Cambridge, but he's on the outside of the horseshoe. So that means Luke Ede is back up into second. Nose to tail, our top three now. They've got through the traffic. Nottingham Trente in the background. Dante Dillon still working his way through some of that traffic. Tom Geeney still running in sixth for Brooks A as well. Three and a half minutes to go this. Brilliant stuff. And Piers Pryor so far not quite able to break away from these two. They've all got really good pace, but Sam Gerrard is clearly eyeing up a move down into Hans Heppin and he goes on, the, on it hard with the brakes. And that was a brilliant move from Cambridge A, and they are back past East Anglia. But sadly for them, this time, it does not mean that they're in the net lead of this race. There's a curb warning for East Anglia. So going to have to be a little bit careful there. Don't want to pick up a penalty in what has been a superb drive so far. This is a really good debut here from East Anglia. Very impressed by this. Uh, this is one of the... Uh, I'm just thinking back over who's had very impressive debuts in previous years. Bournemouth had some very good drives when they debuted in the BUKC. Uclan. Uclan is another... Yeah, Uclan is a very good shout as well, mate. Very good effort. But this has been really impressive so far for the University of East Anglia. Ed Barnes leads for University of West of England today, but is ineligible for points. Piers Pryor in the number four, Loughborough A car is second. Then it's Sam Gerrard in Cambridge A in third, a net second on points. And there's Luke Ide. Or Luke Ide. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, by the way. I automatically jumped to my F1 knowledge and a certain driver of the 2006 F1 season. But it might be Luke Ide. <laughs> Apologies if it is. Uh, Trente and Dante Lidillon. In fact, Dante's got right onto the back of this. It's a three-car race, pretty much, as they come down the Sturmey Straight. There's the number 10, Dante Dillon. There he is. Good pickup by the cameras, and there's a spin there for the 41 of Imperial A, so uh, it's a challenging race for them, unfortunately. They'll be looking to pick this back up in future races. They get a curb warning, so one wonders if maybe they got onto that sausage curb and it just unsettled the cart into a spin, but has recovered and is pointing the right way now. The screens did just see briefly your race leader on the road. As I say, not eligible for points, so we're focusing here on the battle over third place on the road, but net second. And actually, Samuel Gerrard on this lap just has a bit of breathing space here over the East Anglia cart. And if anything, it's East Anglia who need to start to worry about Nottingham Trente. Now, are they aware that Trente is caught up to, to them? Dante Dillon might have the element of surprise here, which would be an advantage. Brooks A is some four and a half seconds off the back of this pack that we're following. Just looking down the order as well. There's some good battles elsewhere. Brooks D is leading quite an impressive battle over ninth place. University of Wales, Trinity St. David B, Nottingham A and Loughborough B, all a part of that battle. Here's Pryor just coming up onto some traffic at the moment. Uh, Brooks B and Southampton are actually having a good battle over 13th as well. So keep an eye on their on that timing tower.
if you're watching on the stream. And hello, by the way, I'm, I'm not sure we've acknowledged yet. I think we're going out on Circuit Tannoy as well mm. today. So hello to those of you who are around the circuit. You picked a lovely day for it. As we are on the last lap, here we go then. This is the closest battle towards the front. Samuel Gerrard in that Cambridge A-cart versus Luki Day in that East Anglia cart. No matter what happens, really, it's been a fantastic drive from both. He's going to have to go defensive, though, into the hairpin. Indeed, he is. There he is, holding the inside. Is that going to give the switch back opportunity to East Anglia? It is. They've got their nose alongside, but they're going to have to switch. Tries to sell the dummy, but doesn't have the space to flick back across. And that, I think, is going to be the end of the opportunities. We've got to keep an eye on the, on the finish line here. Ed Bars is going to cross the line and take the checkered flag for West of England A. But it is this man here, Piers Pryor, who takes the points victory for Loughborough, takes the win. And look at this on the grass, trying for a pass on the grass there for East Anglia at the last. But it is Cambridge A who finishes third on the road for a net second. University of East Anglia A could hold their head up high there, finishing fourth on the road. Nottingham Trent A in fifth, Brooks A in sixth. Good drive up the field there for Tom Geeney. Leeds B in seventh, picking up some good uh, clubman points for themselves there. Brooks C in eighth, ninth for Brooks D. Trinity St. David B in tenth. Uh, it was Nottingham A, Loughborough B, Brooks B, Southampton A, West of England B, Warwick C, Manchester A, Birmingham C, Brighton A, University of Wales, Trinity St. David A rounds out the top 20. Although I do think I maybe saw a penalty for them somewhere in... Uh, proceedings uh, Brighton B, Loughborough C, Bournemouth A in 23rd, Warwick B in 24th Nottingham Trent C in 25th some good battles for them in that race, Birmingham A in 26th, Andrew it's uh, not a good one for them there, Warwick A in 27th, uh, getting the black flag after the incident with Imperial A, Leicester A in 28th, 29th for Birmingham B, Surrey A in 30th, Imperial A in 31st, Exeter B in 32nd and Nottingham Trent B rounds out your 33 runners in that race finally poised this i've got uh Loughborough on sitting on a first and a second cambridge sitting on a second and a second and exeter on a first and a first all three of them have got to race through this final race coming up race number five this is going to be a very very tight finished round three of the bukc 2021 i think we are ready to head down to jacob harris on the grid just waiting for him to give me a, a lovely Wave, he's not quite he's ready not yet. Ready yet. Uh, to keep your comments coming in on the YouTube stream, thank you for your continued support. We are now ready to head down to Jacob Harris on the grid. We'll get us ready for this final race of round number three. Thank you very much, Mr. Mather. I am waiting for our race winner, Piers Pryor, to be weighed and verified as above the minimum weight limit which is happening as we speak, just in the background over there. And then we'll have a quick chat with him. Dante will chat with us in the meantime. Dante, what happened there? Uh, well, I didn't get off to a great start, but eventually I caught where the leaders were, I think. But it wasn't too bad. I think it was just too little too late, really, for me. Uh, but it was good fun. I was really rooting for you in that one as well. I thought you were going to win. Oh, no. I, to be fair, the leaders got quite far ahead, and I managed to crawl back a little bit. Piers came by me, and I struggled to... Uh, stay with him. It, I wasn't too far off. I didn't do too bad, did I? It was one of the tougher races of the day, I reckon. You know, there's a lot of good drivers out there, you included. Um, but yeah, just not your day, maybe. No, well, it's only one race. Got another one later, starting from like from like last. Actually, in that race as well, it's Puli and I alongside each other. Blitz through the pack. I'm looking forward to seeing that, Dante, and that's the right attitude to have as well. The day is only half complete. Exactly. Still lots more racing to do, and I look forward to it. I'll see you later. Dante Dillon there, captain of the Nottingham Trent team. Uh, Piers has indeed been weighed, and he's forgotten that he's coming back for an interview, so we'll just talk to Tom Thickpenny instead, his teammate. Uh, he's been shouted at by the cameraman, Luke. Piers has forgotten to come back to have his winner's interview, so I'm just going to interview you instead. How does it feel for Piers to have won that race? Did he win? Yes, uh, Ed, Ed, Ed Bars. Bars was in front of him, but Ed Bars has long since left university and is just getting in a bit of practice for Club 100 in a couple of weeks' time. So, uh, yeah, how does it feel? Uh, well, it's excellent for us. That's the first and the second, so... Um, he, uh, like, James had a bit of a nap cut to, in the first race, so uh, I don't know if something's up here. Oh, he's coming back, yes. He's, uh, he's realised the error of his ways. Um, but, yes, yeah, so we've got to get a good result here, and... Uh, where, where are you starting? Well, four. 
So just got to keep it up there and we should be there. Have you, have you swung a fourth place on the grid, Tom? What's that? Have you managed to swing a fourth place on the grid? Um, oh, I don't know about that. Uh, oh, to be fair, I've given myself a back horn for the next round. But I just give myself one up in front, didn't I? Absolutely. I'll let you off if you're at the back for the next round. But Piers is here, so you, I'll let you go and uh, do your stuff and I'll give him a quick interview. Piers, how dare oh, you run away from right, me? I nearly escaped. How dare you? How very dare you? Sorry, I forgot I had to weigh and then carried away. Tell us all about your race. That was good fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, as predicted, chaos in the first lap. Just kind of kept my nose clean. I didn't know where I ended up, actually. I have no idea on the end of this first lap. And then just I saw the group ahead, and I was like, right, we're catching them. And I was on my own. I was like, right, I've got good pace. I looked behind, there was a gap. And then about three laps later, I put th three quick laps in. I got a wallop. I was like, Jesus, he must be quick. So I, let, I think, what team was that? That's Ed Bars. He's uh, ineligible, which is how oh, you yeah. inherited the win. He, raced a couple of years. he was rapid, so I just let him go. So I had a hook on the back of him, but he just just drove away from me. So I was like, right, he'll catch them. I'll just try and get second place. And there we go. We did. So that was good. Yeah. Our current lightweight champion in Club 100 uh, returned to the BUKC for a bit of practice. I think he used to race. Uh, I think he might have even raced for Yui when he was here. Um, but long since gone. And therefore, you get uh, all the 60 so I basically points. Won, I, what you're saying is I won the race? Yes. Did yes, I you did. You. you won the race, Piers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How does that make you feel? Very good, actually. Very good. I'm happy with that. Hopefully, Tom can do all right from fourth. Yeah, as we said before, you guys are the top of the championship and Tom's just told us you got a first and a second, so if Tom does all right from fourth, it's uh, looking good for round three. Excellent. Speak to you later, Piers, and congratulations on your race win. Piers Pryor there. Uh, let's go have a chat with the man in front of Tom Thickpenny in this race then, Mr. Matthew Taylor, former super final winner in the BUKC. Mr. Taylor, um, I spoke before the last race with, uh, I think, was it Tom Geeney in yes. the A-Cart? And uh, you mentioned, you know, you guys challenging Loughborough for the title this year. They've had a first and a second now so far, and Tom Thickpenny sat behind you. Yes. You've got to do everything you can to stay in front of him, surely? Yeah, I think this round's pretty much a uh, damage limitation one now. So just finish as high as I can, hopefully. It's a clean race. Aim to finish in front. Have a good bit of fun out there, really. Yeah, and uh, in terms of Brooks' day so far, you've got four teams as opposed to the five you had at PFI. How's it going for everyone? <sighs> it's been an intro. It hasn't been the best day, to be honest. Hopefully we have a better afternoon. But um, hopefully we have a strong last race here and see where we end up. I don't know if it's going to be great, to be honest. And, yeah. uh, what I've been wondering for a while now is, what's your view on the blood clots from the vaccines? Do you think it's still worth the risk in taking a vaccine? I mean, it's such a small chance. The COVID's probably poses the same, a worse risk than that. So, yeah, I think it's fine, personally. And there you have it. Matthew Taylor supports the vaccination programme. Thank you very much, Matthew. We will have a wander down the grid and see who we can see. We've already spoken to plenty of Nottingham Trent today, but let's have a chat to the man in the number 12 car who's just fiddling with his pedals. Who have we got here? Jorge Bellioc. And uh, How are you getting on today, Jorge? Well, we'll see. It's the first one of the day, so a bit rusty, but it'll go well, hopefully. When was the last time you were in a car? Uh, last week. Oh, you shouldn't be too rusty then. Oh, I'm pretty new at this, so... Is this your first time at Clay Pigeon? No, second time. And how did you get on last time? Uh, I got a black, a black flag, so it wasn't really good. Uh, what did you do? Uh, I took up a black marker. <laughs> right, well, stay out, stay out of their way this time, and uh, hopefully you'll do a bit better. Yeah, I'll try my best, thank you. That's Jorge there, another one of our Brooks drivers. Let's wander right to the back of this one. In fact, we'll have a quick chat here with Bradley Shears. Bradley, uh, Leeds Beckett. Yeah, uh, I'm with Surrey today. And uh, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, do you reckon you can do a decent job for them? I'll be honest, mate, I can't hear you. Bradley Shears there, another Club 100 regular. Got Leeds back into the Inters this year, but uh, getting a bit of practice today in the Surrey cart. Right, this will be the last race of round three, BUKC 2020. Andrew and Howard, back to you guys up in the corner. Thank you, Jacob. I'm going to.
whistle through your grid for you folks so that Andrew can give you an update on how it stands for this round coming into the last race. So it is Francisco Gomez Medina for Cambridge B and Brooks A's Matthew Taylor on row number one. Then it's Sam Pooley for Trent C and Tom Thickpenny for Loughborough A on row two. Row three is Lester A's Thomas Edwards and Ryan Edwards for Swansea A. Row four is going to be Jack Fisher for Leeds B and Brooks C's Joe Bleakley. Harry Farnhill for UW UWTSD A and uh, Jorge, we were just hearing from, I think he's a drafted in driver for Birmingham C there. James Pritchard, Pritchard Wood for Swansea B and Warwick A's Alessandro Brozzoni. Actually, no, they are going to have a change as well, I believe. Uh, Surrey A's Bradley Shears and Kaelin Veach for Trent B is row seven. Row eight is Warwick C's Andrew Marco and Lucas Gross for Trent A. Row nine is Brooks B's Aidan Lee and Ezekiel James for Brighton A. Rounding out your top 20 on row 10 is University of West of England A's Matthew Graham. Then it's Jaco Sullivan in the Birmingham A effort there. East Anglia A have Dimos Espiskalpu for them and Newcastle A's Kyle Knight is your 11th row of the grid. Row 12 is X to B's Kamal Chizvisky and David Macbeth for Warwick B. Row 13 is Sheffield A's James Tilly and Sam Massey for Cambridge A. Leeds A have Adam Kernis for them and Sam Dickens is in the Loughborough B car on row 14 and rounding out your top 30 on row 15 is X to A's Ryan Luscombe and John Ratcliffe for Cardiff A. Row 16 is going to be Oxford Brooks D's Callum Porter with Dan Corbett in the number 32 Loughborough C cart. And rounding out the 33 cart grid is Michael Preston in Southampton A. Thank you very much, Howard. Here's your first spreadsheet of doom update for 2021. Cambridge A leading the round at the moment, having done three out of four races on 171 points. Loughborough A are second on 169. X to A third on 167. UEA fourth on 166. Nottingham Trent fifth on 161. Manchester A are your current clubhouse leaders on 160. Uh, Warwick A also, I'm going to mention them because they have a mathematical opportunity to win the round on 149. Basically, everybody has had at the top of that list two really strong races and one eh, not so good one that they may want to improve. And as I say, all of those teams I've just listed out, apart from Manchester, are, are in this race. Uh, so that's the situation in Premier. Clubman's a little bit like this. We've already mentioned East Anglia. They currently lead in Clubman on 166. Uh, Trinity B are done for this morning in second place on 156. Leeds B also doing well in Clubman on 152. They're currently, what's that, eighth overall. Uh, they have a good shot at getting a clubman win in this round and i'm going to stop there because i think there's a race about to begin we'll keep you updated as we go along it's been an amazing debut for east anglia hasn't it i know i know mm. they did have one well, at the time in the inters but com coming they up to did, this yeah. level yeah it's been very very impressive both what they've done today and at pfi last week one last race then of this round number three and don't forget we are going to go into a round number four here as well still plenty of action to come your way from the british university's karting championship today here though we're looking at cambridge b and francisco medina looking to start this one matthew taylor alongside for brooks a and away we go for race number five down into billy's blind is it all going to be clean through there some people going quite wide in avoidance but it looks to me like they're all facing the right way. Can they replicate that in the S's? It goes six wide even, some people taking to the grass, but no one spinning, which is good to see. It's still Cambridge B in the lead as they head through the hands hairpin for the first time. Five wide, six wide, whatever you like wide as they come down the Sturmey Straight. Uh, it looks to me like it's been a good start for the Trent C cart, potentially, as they come through the top part of the circuit. Penalty being shown for Swansea B. Number 23 had an incident through the hairpin, so they're already uh, in trouble in this race. Falling down the order, end of lap one, Trent C lead, Brooks A second, Leeds B, Cambridge B, Trinity A, your top five, Leicester A, Loughborough A, Swansea B, Surrey A and Trent A into the top ten. And that all changed in the last couple of corners of that first lap, Andrew. It was a brilliant uh, run out the corner that Trent C got to uh, get up into the lead there with Sam Pooley at the wheel. And Matthew Taylor has managed to retain that second place for Brooks A. Uncharacteristically, Andrew, Tom Thickpenny, who's got so much experience in that left break cart, losing out just a little bit on that first lap, going from fourth on the grid to seventh at the moment, but still very much in the fight. You can see him there on the tail of the number 39 of Cambridge B. Number 18 recovering from an incident as well, coming out uh, of the bottom hairpin, so look out for them on timing. Extra B, that is. Yeah. I'm sorry to report for extra fans. 
the battle onto the Sturmey Strait. Nottingham Trent C, Oxford Brooks A, Leeds B, and then it is the 11 of University of Wales Trinity St David A. And there down the inside is Surrey A putting a move on Leicester A. I think it was a very aggressive move there. Cambridge A is getting through as well, and that's crucial. Remember those teams that Andrew mentioned just before we kicked off this race who are in contention. Sam Massey at the wheel with his distinctive green Helmet design going down the inside of Leicester A there into top bend, and I think he's made that stick. So strong laps there for Surrey A and Cambridge A as Leicester A battles with Cambridge B there as they go across the line, and that's Sam Massey very wide there. And that's going to be a bump and pass, surely. That was Swansea B getting into the side of Sam Massey there, not Sam Massey's fault at all. Matthew Graham's on the scene, though, the mean machine in the 25. I thought so. Surrey A have picked themselves up a cone penalty, and it's for tagging the cone as they shot down the inside of this hairpin on your screens right now. You can see the cone falling over. That, I believe, was done by the Surrey A cart. In um, fact, more than a bump and pass, it's a black flag. ABC times two for Swansea B, so they will have to come in to the pits and have a chat with yeah. Jim Bowen. They had one on lap one as well. That's where they accrued the other one. Birmingham A have managed to get themselves fairly high up as well there. Big race this for Jaco Sullivan and Birmingham A. They've got to get some good points in this one if they're going to get anything useful out of this round for the championship. Penalty for Surrey A, and they've hit a Colin, so the number 49 will be deducted in a place where they're illegible anyway, aren't they, in this race, so I'll stop talking about them. Well, fair enough. Uh, the Leeds, this battle is fantastic. You're looking at the Leeds B, 34 cart in fourth, Loughborough A in fifth, Surrey A in sixth. Uh, actually, no, this particular bit is Cambridge further down. Leicester A, they're getting passed by Cambridge B. In fact, I think that was Cambridge past Cambridge we just saw there on your screens through the horseshoe. I uh, know, it was Cambridge A past Leicester A, begging their pardon. Point situation as follows. Uh, this last race is all about improving as a black flag for is UEA that take out. That is significant in both Clubman and overall. I was just about to say that UEA were staying on that score 166. They definitely are now. They will not improve any of their race results so far this morning. Is down the inside of the 39. Looks the 48 of Leicester A. Leicester A have really uh, done some accomplished drives so far this morning. But it's oh, Sazza say that as a half spin. He catches it. And uh, look Leeds how driver expensive. does very very well to avoid that. But that's about 10, 12, yeah. maybe 14 positions lost yeah. for Leicester A. They will fall down out of the top 10. So that was just three wide through top bend. I just saw East Anglia A on the outside of a three wide cart battle through top bend. Blimey, this is an incredible battle. Yeah, you can see how costly those mistakes can be yeah. in these uh, these packs of carts. Uh, so Trent C with Sam Pooley at the wheel in the lead of this race, but is ineligible. Yeah. As someone's cutting across the grass. I can see outside the window there. Well, maybe I'll have a look at who oh, that was. Oh, big shot down into uh, the hairpin. Somehow yeah. everybody's kept it pointing in the right direction, but it's. It's got that last race of a round feel. It's getting a bit rough and ready out there as Matthew Graham's trying to fight his way through in the UWEA 25. He's fighting with Oxford Brooks B's number seven. And it was Warwick A, I think, who I saw going across the grass at the S's, but they are still running, pointing the right way. This is an incredible bath So I just want to cover, sorry, Sam Pooley leads this one, but he's ineligible. Matthew Taylor is in the Brooks A cart within a second and is eligible. Uh, then it's uh, University's Wales, Trinity St. David A in third, quite close behind them. Uh, with Harry Farnell, will I believe, for them in this one. Leeds B are in fourth, but we've seen them have a penalty. Loughborough A in fifth right with them. Uh, and then we're looking at this sort of battle pack here. Oh, and that's uh, off at the... Is that down at Billy's Blind? No, no it's down the hairpin. No, it's... Yes. It yes, is. it is. Sorry, that's a very weird <laughs> angle to go off at the hairpin. Yeah, it's quite late on, in that it's like they've collided at the point where yeah. you want to start thinking about apexing. I suppose it isn't too unusual, but it, that, that, I think, is contact mid-corner rather than outbreaking as such. Uh, point situation. At the moment, if the race was to finish with the positions fixed for what we're seeing out on circuit, Loughborough A would be your round winners. They would make it three out of three for round victories. The key bit for Thickpenny is improving on an 11th place that Loughborough A had in race number one. He's currently doing that easily in fifth place as there's a move there between uh, Newcastle A and Leeds A. So Newcastle A moving through the field quite nicely. Oh, it's Leeds Twitch A is getting Leeds. forced out wide there. I yep. think they've lost more positions actually to the likes of Warwick C and Brooks D. Correct. Yeah, and they're now down to 13th. Yeah, absolutely. Frenetic stuff here in the mid-pack. Fairly 
calm as things go up front, I believe. Uh, Luff Beret, by the way, got past Leeds B on that last lap. So Tom Thickpenny now ahead of Jack Fisher. Three wide coming off the hairpin there. And oh, the number 10 gets forced out wide. Nottingham Trent air off and out of this race. Well, that's a, a racing incident for me. I don't think the two drivers on the inside knew that they were three wide there. And the Trent A driver forced onto the grass. And there was nothing he could do. And you don't want to restart there, buddy, because that is on the grass. Oh, that may have been spotted yeah. and may be a black flag for Nottingham Trente because I've just seen them out the window restart from the grass, which is illegal. Yeah, I was going to say, didn't see it on the uh, on the stream, but yeah, that was borderline. We'll see how race control perceived that one. I suppose the one thing one can say is that it is dry on the grass today, so not too much damage to the carts as the 26 of Oxford Brooks D had a look at, I think it was the 46 of Warwick C. Yep through the horseshoe there. Leeds A nearly took advantage to gain some positions. So, I want to give you a bit of a rundown. Trent C leads by half a second from Brooks A. A couple of tenths back is Trinity St. David A. Then it's a two and a half seconds back to Loughborough A. Leeds B having a battle there over fourth. Surrey A and is in sixth with Cambridge. Sorry, Howard, sorry, Andrew. Sorry, Howard. 46 and 15. He's getting very rough and ready just outside the top 10. Yep. Uh, so, Brooks D got back through uh, on the Warwick C card there, who then made contact with Leeds A through the S's. I think there's going to be contact warnings galore in this one. The number three of Exeter A involved in it. And Exeter A are trying to pull their way through to get back into a position where they can start scoring points. This is really, really tough for Ryan Luscombe to pick his way through all of this yep. at the moment. Coming round the top bend, 16 and a half minutes to go. And I think Brooks D has just broken away from it. So the 26 yep. has moved up into that 11th spot and he's managed to break away. That's the goal here. This battle pack that we're looking at on your stream is from 12th Whoa. place down, where people like the Brooks C cart are attempting moves like that uh, on the extra cart, which, you know, they're, they're trying to be aggressive. I'm not saying that was an inherently bad move, but it was bold. The 46 seems to be getting a bit punch drunk out there. There seems yeah. to be every, every single piece of contact to see is involving the 46 in some manner. Yeah. The number 22 of Swansea A's picked their way through very nicely. Uh, in that mess and they've gained some positions out of that one. Matthew Graham you just see on the shot there is clear of all of this. So X to A's job is as follows. They've got a first, a first and a fourteenth. So if they can get thirteenth or higher, they start improving their score uh, from what they had at the start of this race. 46 runs wide, the number 22 of Swansea A fighting back. Lester A involved, Ryan Luscombe very nice move there by Ryan Luscombe up the inside, gets another position. That's extra up to 17th. Well, it is involved in a lot of uh, contretemps out there. Should remind you, Warwick C not eligible for points in this race. I'm not uh, going to have the rants. So, no. Nope. Not going to have the rants. 15 minutes to go. There's the recovering Warwick A carts. We saw them on the grass earlier in this one. Cambridge A, fastest lap of the race. Oh, hello. Cambridge have come alive and are ta starting to take this one to. Loughborough A, so that improves Luff, uh, Cambridge sorry, to 173 points with a second, second and a sixth. Loughborough A still doing enough, uh, more than enough actually, they've got 177. Uh, what are X to A doing? They're currently still on a 11, uh, first, the first and the 14th. There is Tom Thickpenny uh, round leading for yep. Loughborough. And then there is Sam Massey in the number five Cambridge cart. That is putting a lap on a cart at the moment but he's yep. trying to get onto the back of the Leeds B cart which when he started trying to close this gap was from three and a half seconds up the road I'll wager that's gone down a fair amount it has it's gone down to 2.7 on that last lap alone he's setting some brilliant pace at the moment in that Cambridge A cart and it's some three seconds ahead of Surrey A good battle going on between uh, Cambridge B and Birmingham A as well at the moment yeah over eighth place keep a look out for that one the 39 versus the 13. Uh, Brooks A, by the way, they can't win this round, but if results fall their way, they could finish on the podium. They're currently, per my very unofficial calculation, scoring 168 points at the round, which would be enough. Cambridge A there, continuing to do some really, really good lap times in the mid to high 40s. 0.799 last time around. It's Exeter A, who, by the way, off, off your screen here, has got to the head of the crazy battle that still rages on. 
and indeed as I say that Swansea A fire down the inside of them I can see out the window so there's quite a frenetic battle still going on there for about what's now 15th place down here is Tom Thickpenny putting a lap on the Swansea B cart the number 50 as there's a penalty issued to their sister cart the Swansea A cart uh, I'm trying to remember was it Swansea B who had the black flag early on it was yes it's not the best race so far for Swansea so the key bit now for Exeter, uh, they are now in a position where every single position more they gain on the road in this race is another point in this round. They only need one more point in this round to equal Brooks A and they would win the tiebreaker because they've got two wins already. Oxford Brooks B suddenly have a bit of a job to do to uh, potentially gain their A team a point. They've got to hold on to that 14th place. Absolutely. And I just want to give a shout out to Clubbins as well, because we're focusing on the gap between Tom Thickpenny and Sam Massey at the moment in that Loughborough and Cambridge A carts respectively. But in between them is Jack Fisher in that number 34 Leeds B cart. Yep. Uh, significantly up the row. Is he the highest place Clubman at the moment? I want to see. Yes, uh, he is. Yes, no, he is. Of, uh, yes, eligible of eligible ones. Yeah. yeah. So Nottingham Trent see a Clubman team, but not with a points eligible effort in this one. So that's going to be good points for them in their battle. Jack needs one more position, and I think that puts Leeds B in a clubman winning position. At the moment, they are losing a tiebreaker with the University of East Anglia. It's going to be difficult, though. He's got Sam Massey bearing down, and he's trying to pick his way through the traffic. You're looking for the 34 cart in amongst all this traffic. You can see the there it is. Oh, and there's contact there with the tyre barrier for the number 50 of Swansea B, and I think that will go the way of Swansea B. B, it was very close to the Leeds B car, but it was definitely the Swansea one that made heavy contact there with the tyre barrier. There's the 13 of Birmingham A, by the way, past the Newcastle A cart, or in front of the Newcastle A cart, I should say, in a good battle with them, uh, which I wonder if some drama befell Luke. Uh, yeah, I wonder if some drama befell the Birmingham. Did Jake have some kind of drama? Because I thought he was fighting with Surrey at one point. Maybe, yeah. I mean, he's lost about six seconds or so, but he's still mixing it in there in the top ten. He just needs to bring that cart home at the moment. So Nottingham Trent C lead the race, but are ineligible. Have we actually had an eligible winner so far today? I'm not sure that we have. Uh... Uh, in terms of taking it on the road and for the 60 points off each race. Trinity A sure still, uh, in that case leading the round I think they've just left themselves a little bit too much to do to get onto the podium for round three number 10 looking down the inside of the 52 nice move there very clean overtake into Billy's blind and move on and try and gain some more position that's not even Trent A trying to recover back through the field sadly they had their spin earlier on in the race 27th place for them now go down the inside of Cardiff A there, down the inside of John Ratcliffe. There we go. He said he wasn't going to be on the stream. In fact, he's fighting back here. Yeah, Moto Meerkat. And gets the position back. That was some good racing there between Cardiff and Trent A. Jensen Brown's win in race three, mate. That Thank was you. On the road, wasn't well it? Done, Jensen. Good proper win. We'll keep with this battle in 27th place. Cardiff A on their return to the Mains Championship. Had a few years in the Inter second division. Uh, a few close calls from trying to qualify back through. It's the first season, of course, where we've had the promotion and relegation system. So the top teams in Inters in the 2019-2020 season automatically moved up to this level. Uh, some of the lesser teams in Maine last season moved down. As there's a good scrap here. This is all uh, over. This is where the Warwick Sea cart is again, around 18th place. Which team were? Leeds be tied with, did you feel, for club? UEA, okay. who are well and truly out of it in terms of improving their score in this race. It's down okay. the inside, the number 45, looking at 14 there. That's a back mark for number 45 and, and knows about it and it's been absolutely swarmed there. So this is this battle involving Warwick C, Lutwood B, Warwick A in there as well. Penalty for Nottingham Trent A, a bump and pass. So their race goes from bad to worse, plus four positions for them. That was East Anglia, UEA, yeah? Yes, <laughs> the Norwich we're getting, we're getting used to it. Still getting used to it. 
good battles in this field, aren't there? Look at this fantastic string of carts uh, as Southampton A pulls to the inside to try and put a move on Warwick A into the hands hairpin there. And I think has managed to make that one stick. Really good stuff here. Eight minutes left on the clock of this final race of the first round of this race meeting. as there is confirmed on your time tower on the left-hand side, a change for second place. An effective lead of the race. Indeed, yes, good point. The front of it. Good point. Uh, so that further strengthens their position of trying to sneak onto the round podium, puts them on 169 points. How are X to Radio? They're still in 15th. They've not made any further progress through the field and there's some excuse me four and a half seconds behind the brooks card which is not going to let them through indeed and actually so here is the battle over the net lead of the race with brooks a there matthew taylor back up into that second place which is where he started the race now as andrew says ahead of the uwtsd a effort with sam johns at the wheel and you know what? They might uh, they might yet give us another legitimate winner, Andrew, because they are yeah quite close to the back of Sam Poole. The new fastest lap of the race from Sam Johns in that number 11 UWTSDA car. He's not given up on this one yet. You can see there. There was the 11, and there's the uh, excuse me. You could see the 44 of Nottingham Trent C just ahead of them. So they really are on the tail there. Loughborough slightly further down the road in fourth. Net third for Tom Thickpenny. There he is in the number four cart. As the battle for second place comes up on two... No! The other leaders got balked. Trent C got balked by some traffic in top end. And that's Brooks A and UWTSDA up to the actual lead of the race. So there you are, mate. Now it's a proper legit front of the field battle for the win. I'm going to say something rare. Thank you, Mr. Bangmar. To the front of the field, Matthew Taylor. A uh, super final driver's champion in years gone by. Took one of those victories at Wilton Mill. Speaking of Wilton Mill, coming up starting this month, again on uh, the Alpha Live network of social media channels with commentary from DDMM, Wilson Mill Cart Club, every fourth Sunday of the month. Do check that out. Make sure you're subscribed for all the latest streams and videos here on the Alpha Live YouTube channel. Keep those comments coming in as well. Hello to DW Media. David Whitehouse, co-coms on the Club 100 Gran Turismo Sports Series. Asking why uh, Coventry aren't here today. Yeah, some of the student unions not allowing uh, their teams to compete in any sports at the moment kind of similar to the situation that's going on with club motorsport around the UK and spectators uh, but we do hope that issue gets resolved soon because we do want Coventry back on this grid sadly they won't be able to defend their title now down the inside goes Trinity A for the lead of the race great move fantastic move there from Harry Farnhill new suit and helmet combo has ditched the double black that he used to race with but there was nothing new about that overtake from Harry Farnhill. That was a classic move by one of the most experienced drivers in this field. Yeah, fair play. Sorry, I misidentified that Sam Johns, didn't I? But yeah, brilliant Actually, move. no, it is Sam oh, Johns. Sam Johns. Okay. They, they flipped him around. I love it when teams ah. start changing their drivers. But yeah. Just see <laughs> Sam's name on the back of his suit. Wasn't Harry Farnhill at all. Hey. It was a classic Sam Johns move into Billy's Bend. Good, good move there. And look out for... Sam Pooley in that Trent C car. He might not be eligible, but he's definitely a factor in this battle as he's trying to get by the number 27 to put a lap on them. Uh, that's Brighton A, by the way, in the 27. Uh, which, good to see representation from Brighton at this event. Yes. As the lead battle comes through the top crown of the circuit. There's Tom Thickpenny, still could become a factor in this yet. He's some three seconds back, something dramatic needs to happen, but if these two are going to start fighting it out anytime soon, there might be some opportunity right at the very end for Loughborough A. And don't count, and also, don't forget that Sam Massey, in fact, we covered the fact that Cambridge A is now ahead of Leeds B on the road, so that's 
not good news for Leeds being their pursuit of the clubman's win for this round because it means it's lost them another point. Jack Fisher doing all that he can, but uh, yeah, at the moment that's another point off their tally and I think that opens the door for East Anglia, doesn't it? at the moment with regards to clubman standings. Uh, gap between Loughborough and Cambridge, five seconds. Yep. Probably not enough time for uh, Cambridge to pull that back. If they were able to pull it back and switch positions, they uh, would be tied on points for this third round of the season. Yep. For this top three working together at the moment. And Sam Johns hold on to this victory for Trinity A. Taylor and Sam Pooley, who's taken a 60 points already today. Another one of those drivers who didn't take it on the road but had an ineligible driver in ahead of him. This is a long, very, very long running team in the BEKC University of Wales, Trinity St. David, aren't they? They've yep. been here for uh, the um, artists formerly known as Swansea Metropolitan indeed. University. Used, used to race at Swansea Met. I remember back in the early days of me competing, they were so strong around places like Flandau and they've, they've had brilliant form through all the years they're very good at maintaining that form um, as Sam Johns is demonstrating right here right now Flandau of course where we will finish this BUKC season yep first time having a finals round in June since 2013 I'm gonna Boots get my down. little yeah anyone was around at that event. I'm pretty sure that was the round where the BUKC did have some support from Red Bull that year. I'm pretty sure someone drove into the arch at that round. It's happened several times. It may have happened several times, but yes. One minute and 30 seconds to go then. Trinity A lead this race. And it's a high pressure situation because they're now hitting the thick parts of the traffic and there's a lot yeah. of battles ahead of them uh, involving, I think, Warwick A and Luffer B and Leicester A have got a good scrap going on, a few carts ahead. Yeah, so if you remember how we were talking about a battle from 15th place down, they're coming up onto the back yes, of it. Yes, the one so that's this is been going on for the last 24 minutes. Yep. Can Sam Johns negotiate this? He's going to cross the line, it's going to be two more laps. He's going to cross the line with about 60 seconds to go. A lap is 40, 41 seconds around this circuit. Oh, how's your nerves now, Sam Johns, because Matthew Taylor is not letting this one up and the traffic's getting in the way. The number 14 of Luthmer B there is involved. It's cut to the inside and they won't know that the leaders are coming through. Matthew Taylor trying to go around the outside. Sam Pooley's still there in the Trent C cart. Just racing for pride. In fact, Trent Pooley's C have through. got ahead yep. of Brooks A. Great driving there from Sam Pooley. And Sam Johns is holding on to this lead trying to attack and defend. He's, he's got to attack. He's got to get through these back markers. 25 seconds on the clock. They're going to see the last lap board now. Can Sam Johns hold on for another victory here in the BUKC for Trinity? Yeah, yeah, he's punted the back marker. He's punted him off. And that is going to be at least a bump and pass. He'll be frustrated. I don't think the back marker was away. He was there. He's lost the lead anyway. Sam Pooley has taken the lead for Trent C on the road. Matthew Taylor. Brooks A maybe just pulling that Brooks A card onto a podium that could be crucial at the end of the season. We're on the last lap. Through buttons. Through top bend. What a dramatic finish to this race. But it's a very good end for Oxford Brooks A. Matthew Taylor takes the 60 points here at Clay Pigeon and we wait for Tom Thickpenny now because Loughborough A should be over the line to win the round. There they are. Very good day for Loughborough again. That should be, if we've got our maths correct, three out of three. 180 points. Can anybody stop Loughborough A? Cambridge A gave it a really good go. I reckon they've got second in the round with a fifth place there. Leeds B finished sixth. Uh, that's surely going to at least be a Clubman podium for this round. I think they've just missed out on the Clubman win to the University of uh, East Anglia, the Norwich-based team. Surrey A, we're in legible. Seventh, Brooks D, eighth, Birmingham A. Good drive from Jake O'Sullivan. Uh, wrestles some points back for uh, the number 13 carts. UEA in the top 10, Newcastle A 11, Oxford Brooks B 12, Exeter A, Leeds A, Cambridge B the top 15, Southampton A, Warwick C, Warwick A, Brooks C and Swansea A the top 20, Loughborough B, Brighton A, 
the University of East Anglia A, only 23rd in that race, but I don't think that's going to cost them. I think they're going to have taken Clubman. Uh, Nottingham Trent A, 24th. Cardiff A, our co-commentator John Ratcliffe there in 25th. Uh, Leicester A, Exeter B, Loughborough C, Warwick B and Trent B, the top 30, Swansea B, Sheffield A and Birmingham C, wrapping out the 33 runners in that last race for round number three of the BUKC 2021. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the commentary uh, for this round. We've been Double Dash Motorsport Media. We'll be back later on this afternoon for round number four. Uh, but we're going to pass down to Jacob Harris on the grid. Uh, to wrap out this round of the BUKC 2021. Jacob, over to you. Thank you very much, both. Fantastic commentary, as always. Can't wait for more of that this afternoon. Uh, I'm just waiting for Sam, Sam and Matt to wander over. I'm going to try and grab all three of them if possible. Here's Mr. Taylor. He's going to talk to me first. Um, and I'm going to make sure Sam Pooley... Sam, wait behind by there as well. And can you grab the other Sam? We'll go to you first, Matt. Uh, I think believe you inherit the race win from Mr. Pooley, who's ineligible in that one. Yeah, very good. <laughs> hard, bait, hard race, hard race with the bat markers especially. Um, but yeah, it was a really nice, clean race between us three. And yeah, it's good pace at the front. We pulled away, it worked together quite well. But yeah, it was a really fun race. At the end there, with them last bat markers, it was chaos. I was going to say, was it in, as intense to be a part of as it was to watch? Yeah, I had to keep focus all the time just because. The pace was so quick, so I, I couldn't make any mistake to drop off the back of them. But yeah, credit to me, so it was a really, really good race. And uh, for you as a team, really important result? Yeah, 100%. Uh, damage limitation, really. So hopefully that puts us somewhere top five and around, maybe. And then it's not awful, but could have been better. But oh well, next round we'll hopefully keep this momentum going. You certainly did what you did. Congratulations on your race win, and uh, we'll see you at the podium. Cheers, thank you. Uh, Miss Pooley, uh, led that one for so long, obviously ineligible for points in this yeah. one, having won your race earlier, but a uh, little bit of trouble with the back marker, let these two pass for first off, didn't it? Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't too happy about that one, um, but you know, it's, it's a part of it, you know, you, you, we're, we're going to catch them at some point, um, it's just, you know, it seems to be that I kept catching them at the wrong time, but, you know, I, I, I didn't give a hug, but um, yeah, it was a fantastic race between the three of us. You picked the right one to uh, buy an extra seat in. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I'm, just, I'm tired. I just can't, I can't find the words. I'll let you get off and rest in time for your point scoring race this afternoon then. Congratulations, Sam. And uh, the other Sam, Sam Johns. Sam, I thought this was going to be uh, a race winning interview. Um, yeah, I think Black Marcus had a lot to play in that race there. So I think all three of us lost the lead because of them. Um, hopefully I was the most spectacular one, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, right on the last lap there, but uh, it was certainly a spectacular move for you to take the lead in the first instance down at Billy's. I can't remember the move, to be honest with you. From uh, overtaking Matthew Taylor, the guy in the black oh, suit. Yeah, yeah I, I do like that one, actually. That's uh, one of my favourite moves, to be honest with you. Uh, and apologies if, Andrew, uh, they might have called you Harry Farnhill on the stream, despite your suit having your name on it. Uh, I don't know who's captain, but they put the wrong names in the wrong races. No, we. Um, I would have had a 24th and a 33rd where I'm starting for the next round. Um, I know Harry was obviously going to start where I started, so he wanted to start at the back, I want to start at the front, so we just switched it around earlier today, so so we could both get a mix, really, so, yeah. But second's still a really good result, and uh, a little bit of a boost for you, given the news we had this time last week. Um, I got third. Yes, but second, given that uh, Mr Pooley was ineligible. Oh, well, we got a penalty. Uh, he's ineligible, so he's been out already racing for Trent A, that was his race for Trent C. Oh. Uh, so, Matt, Matt Taylor's classed as first, your classed as second. Yeah, okay, well, I didn't know that. I would have fought Matt a bit harder if I knew that, but, um, oh well, yeah, I'll take a second then. Sounds better. Well, uh, maybe you can go one better this afternoon. We're starting 33rd, it's unlikely, but I'll always try. Well, yeah, you certainly won't with that attitude, will you? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll win the next one, don't worry. Good man. I'll see you this afternoon and give you an interview when you do. That's all the racing we've got for you this morning. We're going to take a half-hour break now, so the stream should be back in roughly 25 minutes to 30. Uh, do join us across Facebook, YouTube. Thank you to the 300 or so that have joined us this morning. We'll be back with plenty more of that this afternoon. Goodbye. <laughs>